Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Matt Taylor. Welcome to Spitball, and I'm here with my good buddy. Kyle Amundsen. And, uh, yeah, how are you doing today, bud? I'm good. I'm good. Real good. Yeah? Yeah, it's been been busy. Yeah, me too. my ass too. off, but, you know, it's... That was running. No complaints. It's yeah. good to stay busy. Except I didn't get my work on today, which I'm a little salty about, but... Uh, you well, know. you're looking good. Svelte. A Svelte uh, 2, 6 to 2. Yeah. Um, done almost 20 pounds. Uh, the intermittent fasting is still working like a charm, and I'm still eating like shit, so... You know, when I clean it up, when you know, like on the days that I manage to clean my diet up a little bit, yeah, that's an extra fucking win. Because like Sunday, I, lunch was a, a goddamn feast at uh, Texas Roadhouse, and dinner was uh, a large, uh, it's uh, cookie jar blizzard. I fucked it up last time. It's cookie jar blizzard. It's Oreo cookie dough and some like fudge or whatever the shit. And it's amazing. So I think it's really important that people don't think this is the actual way you should do it. <laughs> Pretty sure it is, exactly. Um, if you eat Texas Roadhouse for lunch and a blizzard for dinner, you're going to lose weight. I guarantee it. Well, right. it is crazy that that's true. You, you, as long as you actually have that you know, 16 um, you know, hours of not eating every day, you are probably going to lose some weight. But I think that there are some healthier ways to do it other than, you know, Texas Roadhouse and Blizzards. But, probably. I, you know, think you actually, do, I think it was actually 18 you. hours that day. Oh, well I'm, then, fuck it. You're fine. You can eat whatever you want. Right. The sweet spot. Um, but just because you're, you're dieting doesn't mean you can't eat great. I, <clears throat> I uh, had uh, the opportunity to go to the 2 and 8 uh, this weekend on Sunday. Um, for a uh, special uh, dinner for with the Ninth Street crew, um, Rob took us all out there, and fuck and a, it was good. Um, PJ was was chefing it up himself, um, coming out and displaying everything and explaining what it was, and it was fucking fantastic. It, I kind of like it when he does that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he he definitely because I don't know, you know. Like yeah, it's I don't know. It's just it just seems so professional and shit. Yeah, I I was. Once again, we've talked a little bit about his crab cakes in the past, but f- God damn, those are good crab Dude. cakes. Really good. You but know, yeah, so we had, we had steak and lobster. And I think it's delicious. just nice for me to remember that, you know, like somebody like PJ can still be good at something. Um, <laughs> right. So. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> what do you got on your list? We, we, um, we, have, a, we have a big show for you today. Um, the baller in chief, Eric Anderson, is going to be here shortly, so we don't have a ton of time. But what do you have on there that you wanted to cover before? Um, well, so this is this is kind of a kind of a two parter. Um, I saw there's a trailer out for the Green Knight, um, which is a kind of a dark fantasy uh, retelling of um, Gawain and the Green and the Green Knight, uh, which is uh, um, Gawain is King was King Arthur's nephew, I believe. Uh, he's brash and inexperienced and and undertook this big quest um and the green knight was a knight that showed up uh at court um and it made a challenge i've got um anyway it's but it looks kind of weird it might be it looks maybe a little artsy it might be too smart for me Hmm. um uh you know as but i'm i'm still excited i'm still gonna see it um you know, of course, the whole uh, Arthurian legend. As much as I would love to see somebody redo Excalibur, if they could redo it really well, um, <laughs> I decided that the author, um, uh, Sir Thomas Mallory, uh, this is part second part of this whole this idea. Um, somebody should make a movie about Thomas Mallory. Okay, um, he was an interesting cat. Uh, so Mallory was a common name. Um, yeah, this is uh, he was born in. They're not quite sure. It was it's the 1400s, so 15th century. Uh, he was born sometime between like four, right around 1415. Okay. Um, and um, uh, there was a lot of Mallories, and uh, so there was a, several Thomas Mallories, and uh, so his like they attached this to to his name, you know, like they would do like like Smith or you know stuff like that. Okay. Um, Taylor. Um, right. Uh, so. <laughs> The, what was attached to his name was Knight Prisoner. Okay. Because though he was, you know, he was a knight and uh, you know, and a member of Parliament. Um, his, his father, uh, Sir John, was actually a member of Parliament too. He came from a good family. Um, and uh, he eventually was a member of Parliament. Um, but he spent a lot of time in prison. Really? Um, he was a professional soldier. 
um, and you know, and and a member of parliament, like I said, uh, and you know, in, in good standing with his peers and everything. Uh, but he was also apparently um, uh, a thief, a rapist. Um, he was convicted for, of extortion, uh, murder. Um, he uh, so so back then, <clears throat> um, if politicians committed crimes, they um, they didn't actually have to like stop being politicians, but they did actually have, put them in jail. Unlike today, where yeah. you can just commit crimes and it's fine. Yeah, um, and then the, the, you know, the king, um, like he, like he received at least uh, at least one pardon from the king that I know about. Hmm. So basically, you could be a fucking crook, um, but you know, if you were cool with the king, he'd pardon you. Which hmm. you know, oh, that's cool. If anybody watches the news, you know, that's still kind of a thing. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah, uh, theft, extortion, murder, and rape. Uh, he was uh, he's quite the fucking criminal. Um, and uh, wrote uh, La Morte d'Arthur, um, which we've talked about before, uh, like the, 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 the permanent uh, work of Arthurian legend. Um, and uh, he wrote that in Newgate Prison. Okay, so he was in prison when he wrote it, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously he was pretty fucking busy when he wasn't in prison. Oh, yeah. Um, but well. he, uh, like, he really was that guy. Like, he, uh, at one point, um, he, he was locked up. I think this is when he was locked up for extortion. Uh, he got out, was locked up two months later, um, escaped, uh, and then was back, and then, then caught and put back in prison a month later. Um, this was before he received a pardon. Um, and <laughs> but uh, when the, the king finally, when the king pardoned him, uh, the pardon that I know about, uh, um, uh, he was pardoned by the king, and uh, then he took the wrong side. He chose the wrong side in a little rebellion, mm-hmm. um, and then he wound up back in prison. Yeah, you can't do um, that. No, no, you got to choose wisely. Um, but he died in uh, 1471, and the Morte d'Arthur was uh, first uh, published in 1485. Um, and if you've ever seen Excalibur, if you haven't seen Excalibur, it's cool. If you if you if you're okay with like old 80s movies and stuff, it's not like the special effects are great. It was made in the fucking 80s, but the movie itself is cool. Uh, you know, it's like. Like I said, the green uh, the Green Knight might be like artsy and too smart for me, um, but Excalibur, you know, was there was armor and weapons and battles yeah. and titties and you know, like just it was a badass movie. Yeah. So, it, what is that going to be on? Is that a uh, that is going to be in theaters? I guess. Okay, so it's um, a movie movie, but probably not around here. Right. Like I said, kind of artsy. Yeah. You know, smart. Um, we don't do that so much around here. Hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, and then uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's one thing. Well, so <clears throat> um, kind of along the same vein about uh, movies and stuff. Have you heard anything about the show um, for all mankind? Hmm. No, I don't think I have. I hadn't heard anything about it, and I can't believe that it it went past my radar because it's everything I want in a show. So how I found out about it was I was listening to Joe Rogan and there was this guy on there and his name is um, Garrett uh, Reisman and he used to be a NASA astronaut and then resigned from NASA to go to work for SpaceX um, and uh, he actually like ran into uh, to uh, Musk one time and was like uh, uh, just they were just shooting the shit and he was like uh, yeah I'm Elon uh, Maybe come work for you, and he's like, "Fuck yeah, dog!" And like, so he like started working for uh, SpaceX, and then, uh, actually, while he was a NASA astronaut, he ended up meeting the people that were making Battlestar Galactica. Because while he was on the space station, he was watching Battlestar Galactica. He was binging it, and uh, so we got to meet those guys, and kind of you know developed a relationship with them. And then they were starting this new show called For All Mankind, and they got a hold of him and said, hey, would you be interested or willing to come on and be a technical, technical advisor? advisor on the yes. show? So the premise of the show is that... Uh, is this a series? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll explain. So the premise of the show is that it uh, it takes place like just before the first moon landing. And the first episode, and I'm going to kind of ruin it for you, but it's really pretty much in the first... 10 minutes of the first episode and it's also what what hooked me um so they're 
you know, everybody's sitting around and it's all, you know, the sixties and they're watching, you know, the television and everything. And, you know, they're, they're look, watching this person, you know, the moon lander and everything like that. And they get out of there and it's a fucking Russian. So the, it's an alternative history. What would have happened if Russia landed on the moon first, creating a space race? Cause once we landed on the moon, Russia was like, eh, fuck it, we're done. You know, not that they haven't done anything else, but there was never a space race. But I don't know if you know this or not, but Americans ain't real good at second place. And so they they step it up, and it's so good. And one of the best things is Joel uh, Kinnaman, I think is how you say his name, from Altered Carbon. Yeah. He's the main character in it. Oh, shit. So how the fuck did I miss this? I know how. It's on Apple TV. Fuck <laughs> Apple. But you know what? God damn it. So I was like, shit, it's on Apple TV. So it's like, that stupid goddamn show with uh, Jason Momoa or whatever that I want to see. So I was like, I don't have an Apple TV. I assumed you kind of needed an Apple TV or something to do it. But, dude, it's just like fucking anything else. And it's cheap. It's like $5 a month. And there's that show, um, which I'm three episodes in now. And they're so good that I have to, like, have... I got to be like, I got to make sure I have nothing else to do. Is the series like, is it complete? It's, uh, the second season is dropping. Shit. Yeah. Man. It's so good. Am I going to get another goddamn fucking, streaming series? When I'm talking about fucking accuracy, and I was going to say, I'll just let you use mine. I wouldn't say that on a, on a uh, podcast. We, we would never do that. But actually you can't. That's one thing oh. that's bad about it, or that's interesting, because Apple's Apple. Um, it's all connected to your Apple ID and everything, so it's like, uh, you know, you uh, you, you mm. log in with your Apple ID, which it, you can't share because it fucking tracks all your devices or whatever. Um, but uh, I love accuracy and, like, shit in shows. And I can, I can you know, I can totally, like, uh, uh, you know, suspend belief but if the show's about something that's like kind of sciencey, man, I want the science to be good. Have you watched C yet or anything? C? C or is that the name of it? Mm-hmm. That the like dystopian future or that or that the one with um No, but I I it, that's also on Apple TV and that kind of looks pretty good too. Man, it I mean, it looks cool. It looks pretty But I don't good. know if it looks good. Dude, it does look pretty good. The really? preview looked really good. I don't Man. know. But anyway, hmm. as far as accuracy goes, dude, they fucking nail it. Totally nail it. And I knew I was going to like it because when Garrett was talking on Joe Rogan, he was talking about all of his favorite shows. And he was saying Battlestar Galactica. You know, he just loved Battlestar Galactica. And Joe Rogan's like, yeah, I love Battlestar Galactica. I love space movies, space shows and stuff. And, and he's like, so, like, do you love The Expanse? And Joe's like, what's The Expanse? And Garrett went on and on and on about it. Really? Saying, like, these guys fucking nailed it and was talking all about the science of it and stuff like that. And I was like, hmm. And Mm. now you work on a show that nails it. Yeah. This is going to be pretty interesting. And it was really cool because he has a shit pile of power on the show. So he can basically trump bullshit. (laughs) So he could be, which is a cool thing for a technical advisor, because yeah. usually he can just say like, no. Usually they sit in the background. They're like, actually, that's fucked uh, up. Shut uh, up, dude. Yeah. Um, that you get had, that fucking guy off the set. You, <laughs> the, no gun actually has seventy three bullets. I'm sorry, that doesn't work. Um, yeah, no, he can. He he, and he has a couple of times said, "Ooh, no, it can't work that way. What if we did it this way?" And they're like, "Oh, that's even a better idea." Like they want to do it right too. I am absolutely impressed with it. It's fucking amazing. Nice. Oh, I, uh, one thing, speaking of other shows, um, the, uh, the protagonist in uh, the green Knight, the guy that plays Gawain, okay. um, is, uh, from, uh, the newsroom. Uh, oh, okay. The dude that plays, uh, the, the guy that does their, their, uh, their web content. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, fuck, what is his name? Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, up job or whatever. Yeah. What did what did what did he call him at first? The Punjab or Punjab. something job. Like <laughs> yeah. Neil is was the character's yes, name. Yes. But he's yeah he's like uh, yeah for a long time he so called him Punjab. What is the name of this show again? It's called For All Mankind. 
Apple TV, and it is fucking great. Okay, now, and I'm curious about that damn C or site or whatever the C. hell it is. Yeah, C. it's like S E E, like I can see. I I really liked the preview for it. I don't know if I'm going to jump into it, but at this point, but all I need is one more damn reason to buy this service. Well, there is one other show on there that I'm interested oh, shit. in. Shit. So, and it's the one that uh, Ricky Gervais was making fun of at the um, Oscars or whatever, because supposedly it's a kind of a, a woke show and he was making fun of apple tv for, oh. for putting out a woke show but but it looks pretty good it's got jennifer aniston in it and um uh from the office the uh michael scott from the office what's his name he's such a good oh um god damn it i should know his name but michael scott from the office is in it and uh i think Kristen dunce is the other one but it's kind of like the newsroom in the sense of it's like they they run a morning show and then but something happens and they have to like step up the integrity of it and stuff. I think I've seen something about Saw that. Saw a preview for it. Thought it looked good. Man. Um, was going to maybe give it a try at some point. Hmm. Um, but it is the one that Ricky Gervais was making fun of because it is kind of a woke show and it's on a network that, you know, is uh, or on a network that is, you know, run by people that like, you know, use slave labor. Eh, what the fuck? What are you going to do? And yeah. I don't, and I mean, I am, I'm not an Apple guy anymore, you know, uh, but I dude, never have been. I'm a content, never will be. I'm a content whore. So if you got good content, uh, I don't really care any, about anything else. It's pretty important to me. Yeah. The show is so fucking good. Well, now I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I, 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 it. It was it was one that was hard to stop watching, but I'm like I want to savor it. I don't want to just. Does it have Sean Austin in it? Oh, uh, who's Sean Austin? I don't know. Um, Samwise Gamgee. Oh, uh, played Rudy. No, but it has that football player that played Rudy in the Saturday Night Live skit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, just actually, it's super cool. There's so many like cool little things about it um, that like. Because, I mean, this dude was around during that time. Little, It's a little bit before his time, but, I mean, like, he grew up in the in, in NASA, so, I mean, he knows all of the NASA, whatever. But, you know how back in the day, every astronaut had, like, a Corvette? <laughs> that was, like, a big deal. And it's just the fucking Corvettes in it are just great, and there's just so many cool things. So it, does it, so it takes place around that time, then? It, it Basically, the Russians beat us to the moon by two weeks hmm. and so it's two weeks prior to the moon landing whatever year that was hmm. and uh, all right and that's the premise and it's fucking great there's so many cool things i don't want to wreck it though because you didn't watch um man in the high top or was it man in the high castle i watched a couple like you know maybe i think i got almost through the first season but i was like i was i was falling asleep during episodes and dude i don't ever sleep well, I'm watching. Well, I shouldn't say that because I actually passed out the other night. But oh. passed out, fell asleep. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. I was. De that was definitely mm -hmm. induced. But uh, yeah, I, it, that one was just kind of boring the shit out of me. But I like the premise. There's long stretches of boring in that show. Um, I, you know, and I'm not super in love with it. But I, I, I've got. I watched. You know, I've got like one season left. I think it's the final season. So I need to finish that one of these days. But I'm just like. Uh -huh. You know, but it is kind of boring. So I'm like, kind of not. I like, I like our alternative history. Yeah. Um, usually, but you know, but I guess I can't think of a great example of alternative history in a television show that I really liked. Hmm. But this one, um, is super. Fox good. News. There's lots of stuff on Fox <laughs> News that I think qualifies. Probably true. <laughs> Probably true. Uh, all right. What else? Let's see. What do we got here? Um. Well, I mean, I've got I've got a bunch of stuff. Um, I, uh, you know, just little rants and shit like that. Uh, um, I uh, <laughs> something something from Facebook. Uh, there's a, a an old friend of mine from my hometown. Um, uh, she posts a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of it is fake. Um, a lot of it's a lot of it's fake. Um, and then sometimes, but some, you know, she wants to get it right. Like sometimes she'll she's like, hey. Like she tagged me in something a while back and she's like, is this true? And it turned out not being true, you know, but the fact that she asked, you know, like she, I was like, well, 
you have Google. Like you can use Google, you can find this shit out for yourself. But like you know, sure, I'm, you know. But, I kind of ran down uh, Chris uh, Drummy's one. Drummy Drummier. How do you say it? Dunmire. Dunmire. Whatever. Dummies. Uh, one day, because he he said you know, tagged me in something and said, Does it, Matt, Matt Taylor, is this true? And I was like, why are you asking me? Ask fucking Snopes. And then it wasn't true. It was a complete bullshit article. But I mean, it's like, dude, I have the, oh, I have the exact same tools that you have. You're sitting on a computer. It's not magic. Um, but uh, she posted something. Um, there's, a, <laughs> there's a journalist. Um, she's actually a conspiracy theorist and just a fucking hack. Her name is Laura Loomer. Um, so the city pages did an article on this fucking stupid, uh, article that she wrote, um, uh, or she discovered busloads of Muslims committing voter fraud. Well, you know, there's a lot of problems with this, with the fucking article itself. For one, they don't ask you what your religion is when you vote. All right. Uh, you can't prove shit because, uh, we're talking about secret ballot and we're talking about fucking a question that they don't ask. Right. Um, so basically, the premise is fucking stupid. Uh, Laura Loomer is fucking stupid and a well-known hack. Um, and it was an article fucking like bagging on her and like exposing this bullshit. But the headline was kind of a grabber for people that just want to think that Muslims are fucking committing voter fraud. So my friend posted this, and uh, you know, and, and other people commented on it and shit. But it was, it was not what they thought it was. I, I, clearly, they had not read the article. Well, that's the thing, and it's so it's so fucking frustrating. Well, and you know, and I see that so much, and it just made me like want to like want to bring that up, you know, because like there's so much satire out there, and people will latch onto these satire like satire articles and shit and post it thinking that it you know right it's the onion man yeah right and and it's not like. It doesn't look, you know, it, it doesn't prove your point. It actually is on the opposite side of that. And it doesn't make you, you know, and it, and it shows people that you either don't read the shit that you just throw out there. You don't mind being lied to. Um, you don't fucking get it. And, you know, it's just. Right. You know, well, it drives me nuts. I mentioned it last week. but And you don't that, understand what you, or you don't understand what you read. There was an article that said, like, the one, uh, you know, Bernie is now part of the 1%. And if you read the article, it explains it not super well, right? But, I mean, it, the tagline, it gets everybody, whatever. And nobody goes to the New York Times and actually reads it. They no. just read the tagline. And then the other one that oh, made me so fucking angry was that it was, like, it was something about vaping, and it was something like CDC uh, links, you know, like, you know, 28 vaping deaths to da-da-da-da-da. So it was like this. That was the tagline. But what the entire article was about was how all of those deaths were from uh, illegal um, marijuana cartridges. They did a great job in the article explaining what the actual problem was. But the fucking tagline was like, was like, basically, vaping is going to kill you. And then it went into the article and said, actually, no, it's not vaping. It's vaping illegal, um, you know, fucking um, um, uh, THC products. That's going to kill you. Well, you know, and I said, I said that really what this article needed to say was that, you know, like, um, Smoking has killed 380 people today and is going to... Is that what it is? It's like 300 some a day? It's fucking... I don't even remember. Or is it 1,000? It's, it's fucking... It's a lot. And then... And they are, and that that many people will likely be killed by it by smoking tomorrow and again on Thursday. You know, because it's like what... It's like that's the fucking... That's the fucking tagline. I don't know. Yes, it always drives me crazy. Um, clickbait bullshit. Man, but you know, you're that that's and people that just don't fucking know what they're you know right I know. well I have a friend we both I'm not gonna call him out but I don't agree with a lot of what he shit put what he shits on Facebook actually I thought I fucked that up but I realized that no was, you but know. he put something out there the other day and I was like oh that's a really fucking great article <laughs> he must not have read it. You know, like he put it out and may, I can't remember what the line was. I wish I could, but it maybe could have come across 
as like conservative V or whatever. Um, but the article was like great. And it, the tangling wasn't even really that bad. I was like, I know you don't believe this. What the fuck are you posting it for? But he must have just thought he was, oh, this is going to piss him off. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> and I hate when I, like when I see something that's clearly false. Um, and I, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and fact check this for them and I'll just put this link right here. I won't say anything. I'm just going to leave it right here so they can read that this is untrue. But it's already been shared a couple times, you know. It's right. Got, it's got 10 likes. It's got a couple of shares, you know. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to track it down, you know, to all these, you know, cousin fuckers and, you know, like just, hey, uh, actually, because a lot of times, you know, like I've, 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 I found myself in that fucking unenviable, you know, like, hey, uh, if you look at this, it's not true. And people, like, I don't see a lot of people, like, arguing anymore um, about the bias of fact-checking sites because that's just a tiny little fringe of people, and those people are real fucking idiots. They, yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, um, yeah, they, but I do, like, I've had people say, well... I mean, you know, this sort of thing happens. It's like, it's you know, this stuff still goes on. Or it sounds like it should be true, shit like that. Where they're like, oh, yeah, it's a lie. But I'm okay with it because I feel like this happens, you know. And that just means you don't give a fuck about the truth. You're a fucking liar, man. Like, yeah. you're a knowing liar, too. Like being, a, like, being fucking, being dumb and getting fooled is one thing. That's easily forgivable. I'm a dumb motherfucker myself. But... When Having you, that pointed out to you and then be yep, like, And just well, being okay with it? I don't care. Then you're just fucking dishonest, you know? Then you're a flat earther. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Um, a, a friend of mine ran into, who the fuck was I talking to? Uh, a friend of mine ran into some real flat earther. I've never met a real flat earther. I've only met one. And he was a, he was a young man. But he wasn't only a flat earther. earther. He was he believed that we were like the, there was a space bubble as well. And uh, he showed me, we're this, a snow globe, like essentially a snow globe, a flat. <laughs> snow globe. And he showed me this video of this rocket going up and then hitting the, hitting the, the roof. And I was like, Oh my God. Is that what happened to the space shuttle when we were kids? Yeah. Ah, it's such a bummer. But other than that, yeah. And then there's a, all this religious shit in there too. And I don't know. I was like, oh, mental illness kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, damn it. <clears throat> so uh, I know that uh, Mr. Anderson is going to be here shortly. Yes. But um, one thing uh, I've been thinking about and we talked about in the past about doing is kind of like a, like a not um, a, a word from our not sponsors or whatever. Um, and I've always thought about it or whatever. But um, I know you don't listen to very many podcasts, but you have ha you've had to have heard some me undies commercials right for me undies oh my god okay well anybody out there who listens to podcasts me undies sponsors or supports like a shit pile of podcasts and and like Joe Rogan is sponsored by him and he talks about these fucking underwear nonstop these it sounds like undies. pirate underwear me undies <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah kind of is so uh, i'm going to trademark that shit meta got me and her a pair of matching me undies for Valentine's Day. Okay. And I was like, oh, fucking awesome. Me undies. I've always wanted to try them because I hear about them constantly. How fucking good could they possibly be? Right? They can't possibly be as good as everybody talks about them being. Completely wrong. They are the nicest fucking underwear. I've ever put on my body really they are made out of a fabric i've heard these commercials like so many times i fucking have them memorized but <clears throat> they are made out of a fabric called micro modal which is like 10 times softer than cotton and it's got just a little bit of stretch to it and it's like they're like silk but like fucking not that satiny they're like a cotton silk hmm. hybrid and they make your junk <laughs> look great <laughs> like I, it's weird to say but you put them on they have like a little junk pocket right that's just perfect uh, and like a dick sleeve kind of not exactly a dick sleeve but like a i'm gonna call it a junk pocket they have junk. a junk pocket yeah mm. 
So once you get down to your target weight, we're gonna have to do a little me on these. Uh, we're gonna have to do a little me on these photo shoot to like show everybody how awesome our junk looks. Um, um, I'm gonna need to borrow some junk. But uh, no, I've dude, got my mantis. I'm telling you though, like I, I was like, I was excited for them because I thought it was really sweet of her to get it, give me that as well. But also like, you know, you hear about this shit so much. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, I'm sure they're fucking fine underwear, right? But I really, really like them. They're really much nicer than I thought. Did I ever tell you about my mantis? Your mantis, no. Yeah. Um, so uh, Nathan, many years ago, decided he was going to buy me a gag gift. And uh, um, so and they were, they're like silky, like lacy, like panties cut for a man. Uh, not generously cut. They were they're pretty tight. Um and uh <laughs> so like and our birthdays are like close together or whatever um so then i <laughs> like uh, as like part of a gift for him um i don't remember was it my ex-wife my girl that i was seeing whatever uh took a couple pictures of me like like on all fours like wearing these manties and they were like like a pinkish purple and i got a flower in my mouth and shit you know um i, I feel like i have seen this you picture. may have um, and, uh, uh, and he, and like when we framed it and we, fra- we, we fucking framed it and shit. Um, and then like the day that I gave it to him, like we went to, we, we had, had like lunch or some shit like that. And, uh, uh, we were up by, we were, you know, we were up home, you know, in this rednecky little place where a lot of our like homeboys that we went to school with and sure. shit hung out and he fucking forgot it. Like sitting there when we were leaving. And I'm like, you go back, you know, but we realized it in the parking lot and I sent him back in there to grab that motherfucker. Cause I'm like, that's the last fucking thing I want. <sighs> Probably fucking some redneck dude jerking off to it. <laughs> I wanted to fuck you since high school. But, um, uh, so, um, but then, so he had this and he put it up in his house. But then every once in a while, somebody would come over and like they leave and he was like, Oh shit. You know, like, I didn't realize. I forgot that, that that was up, and they saw that shit. You know, like one was a fuck, like an assessor, like no it was like official shit. You know? oh, that's awesome. And I'm just like, that's fucking spectacular. I I just either I just have a great imagination, or I have seen this photo, or you have yeah imagined a similar scenario yeah, once or twice. Or so. I mean, I have wanted to fuck you since high school, <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't have to be a redneck for that. Cool. Is there anything else? Because I think I, I no. Think let's uh, yeah. Let's take a little break. All and right. Sounds good. Well, we will be right back get with in here. the baller in chief. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Spitball. And I'm Matt Taylor here with my good buddy Kyle Robinson. And today we have Eric Anderson in the house. How you doing, Eric? Good. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Yeah, man. Big well, fan. Yeah, that we, that. And well, a member of the Bald Ambition tour. Y- yes, right, indeed. The, the yeah. trifecta yeah. going on right now. <laughs> yes, we got the we got the bald bearded look. The Bald Ambition tour. Do you remember one of the names we were going to go with when we were first, or actually the the name that I like pitched to Kyle like originally was um the bald and the beautiful <laughs> i think <laughs> i did read that there's that someone one of your messages i'm like yeah <laughs> no you did you went the right direction yeah uh, yeah well, well, i thought the bald and the beautiful like uh, no, no, spitballing i was throwing out a bunch of different names and shit you know and i'm like uh, when we're, we're like kicking them around and i'm like i don't know man i'm just spitballing here and he's like i love it yeah. I was hoping that's how it happened. <laughs> yeah, that was exactly it. He said, I'm just spitballing here. And I said, actually, I, I don't mind that one. Yeah. I don't mind spitballing. We had some stupid fucking ones. And for what we do, I mean, it's pretty fucking perfect. Isn't it? Yeah. Though I did like the, um, I do like the uh, the idea of the Bald Ambition Tour. Yeah. So if we ever if we ever take this on the road, we're going to have to call it the Bald <laughs> Ambition Tour. And uh, yeah, that would be very cool. Well, we'll need two buses because you know how I fucking snore. You know, we can't like take off in like one in the same vehicle unless we were like, unless it was a big old like RV or something. We, we'd sleep, slept on both. I end. think we're big enough for two, two full buses, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it works into the stay, stay poor, like, slow like, scheme. Yeah. yeah. Rock, rock bands, rock, rock bands, bands uh, travel yeah. like that. Yeah. So what the hell? yeah. I'll be fine. Everything. Speaking of rock bands, <clears throat> yes, yeah. So we were just talking about all the all the shows that are because uh, um, 
Eric is a huge music guy. Oh, and I can't play yeah. it or sing it. I would just like to oh, go see it. Shit, me neither. But, but uh, Eric uh, tried to uh, to kill me. Um, <laughs> uh, so he was saying that he also has a man cave and he likes to have little trinkets in his man cave. So he he brought this and then he told me it was a lighter. So of course I was like, oh, how does it work? And I'm like, doesn't it? I'm like, and I like started myself on fire. It comes out of the side. I was like thinking it came out of the end here. I didn't want to tell you, but I did the same thing when I picked it up tonight because I was thinking it was going to come out the end too. Yeah, I haven't played with it for a what, while. Light your cigarette, and you're like fucking, you can burn your face off. Torch but yeah, that, that's very cool. That's going to have to I'll, I'll go up on here. Maybe Trump can play it. Oh, your oh, troll. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of stuff here. I didn't want to bring anything too he big. Fell over. Oh, yeah. He looks like he's rocking. Yeah. That here. There you go. Right That's good. Yoda can hold it up. But yeah, so we were talking about all the different, like all the tours and stuff. And so Chris Stapleton is coming to Minnesota. I've really got to. So do you go see yeah. a lot of shows? I am a huge live music concert guy. Um, I usually go with my buddy Eric Hoppajoki, which I yep. think both you guys know. So we've gone, I don't know, I've seen Motley Crue. That's kind of my hair band era. Yeah. So I've seen Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and all those guys multiple times, just about every time they come here. We've traveled a few times, and I am one of the few people I know that likes to hear the live version on the radio, or some people uh. hate that. Now, I do like when the performer plays it like it is on the tape. Or at yeah. least can you know. play it. Yeah. So I can sing along or act like I am. See, that was one of the things that I always, because I love Willie Nelson, but oh, every God. goddamn time I see Willie Nelson singing a song live, he changes so much shit. I'm like, that's not the song that I know, Willie. Like, yeah. besides, it's not like Willie's famous for his beautiful voice, you know, like yeah. it's his songwriting, you know, like, so mm. I want that shit the way it's it is. It's almost unrecognizable. Hank Jr. does the same damn thing. <laughs> really? And okay. I know all the words to... Well, for sure, Hank, but quite a bit of Willie, but you can't sing along to that. Huh. No, I don't Shit, know. No? I don't know. Yeah. So, and I've never really been as odd as it seems because I'm so into musicians and into like, uh, um, you know, going and seeing, you know, bands play. But I don't, I don't, I don't go to concerts. Very, very few. I've been to very few. I mean, we've talked a little bit about it on the show, but I went to Rush when I was 18. That was the only real concert I ever went to. And then just recently, Meta and I went to a couple. We went to the Violent Femmes and uh, Ben Folds, which was cool. I can't believe I missed the Violent Femmes. Yeah, and to me, I Ben Folds was the show. And, and I mean, he was. <laughs> Outside I mean, he, of your, when you owned bars and had bands, have you gone to a lot of, like, little local yeah i'm mean, not a lot but i like to and now i do you know now i get to go um and then you know at the farm on st matthias we have a couple of shows uh, or we did have a couple of shows every year we didn't have any last year and i don't know if we're going to again this year it's still up in the air we're, we're trying to figure it out well, it sucks um, that live music is just going away you know like can't like, like bars and stuff here. yeah it's just well <clears throat> at least yeah. here well and especially especially uh like uh cover bands are yeah. pretty much going the way of the dodo. It's just too expensive. It's too expensive. I mean, it's hard to to like have a cover band, you know, that is playing. You know, like back in the day when you used to have like, uh, uh, you know, um, what the fuck was that band's name? Dead Walleye would come to the yeah. Ox. You know, I mean, those guys were getting you know twenty five hundred bucks a night to play, which they were super good. They had a big draw, but I mean, that's hard for a bar to to sustain. You got to sell a lot of booze. Yeah, you got to make up that cost somewhere. And I did. I spent a lot at the Blue Ox, so I did my part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just talking about that the other day. Where <clears throat> they had a uh, uh, one of the guys who comes down to Ninth Street quite a bit um, was having a birthday party out at um, St. Matthias Bar, and Al, we're, Big Al, yeah. the guy who <laughs> used to run, you know, bartend Flamin bounce, Al. Flamin' Al, um, he owns he owns the uh, uh, bar down there now, and. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of cool. And I told the story, I think, before, but I walked in, and I, I probably hadn't seen him in a decade. And sat down at the bar, and he's like, hey, man, how's it going? Still drinking Heineken? I was like, you're fucking shitting me. Damn. Ten years, you remember my name. I wasn't a great customer at the Ox. And you also remember the last beer I was drinking? And I'm like, dude, I haven't drank a Heineken in ten years, but fuck it. <laughs> For all <laughs> time's sake. <laughs> well, yeah, now I'm in, you know. I, uh... Um, I found out about a tour just today 
um, Trinity posted something about it. Um, so Primus, yeah, I saw is that. going on tour and they're doing Rush songs. Yeah, they're gonna do a Rush tribute. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. One, I'm super curious, you know, because those things are very different. Very different. Um, but I really fucking love Primus and I love Rush, and I'm like. How is this gonna sound? I, I just can't imagine. Cool? All I can hear is like the you know the theme song for uh, fucking South Park. You know, <laughs> isn't Primus like heavy? Yeah, well, pretty heavy. Kinda. Yeah. Well, they're weird. They're heavy. Super bass driven. And Do stuff. you know the South Park? You know, I've heard it a million yeah. times. If you want to hum, that, it, that's probably... that's Primus. Well, but there's then, no like, humming involved. Um, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like my name is Mud. And Jerry was a race car driver. When owned his big brown beaver. Um, just, I mean, but it's like super heavy bass. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's kind of known, um, as one of the best, you greatest know, bass, bass players, players of all, all time. time. Yeah. yeah. I've never been a humongous fan, but. Well, I'm not a huge fan, but I do. I mean, I like them quite a bit, you know, like they're a band. Like they're, they're definitely like on my list of bands that I'm like, Oh, I can't believe I've never seen these guys. Hmm. Um, but yeah. So when was the last time you saw Guns N' Roses? Vegas uh, um, wasn't back. It was right before they got back with Slash and stuff. So two, three years ago. Okay, because I've heard that they're fucking great. Now, well, thing with Axel is uh, he's very fussy that they do play it the way of the that it's played on the tapes, and that's why he's got multiple guitarists and stuff. Because really, when you're recording. It's not right. very often four or five guys. There's a lot of extra instruments in there. And so, I mean, it sounds spectacular. And he can still hit his notes. Like Vince Neil from Motley Crue cannot. <laughs> or remember the words. We saw that shit on, yeah. David Lee Roth was, was terrible that way. I heard that too. Oh, man. oh, I heard David Lee Roth was got booed off the stage or something down in I Vegas. went to see him. And who was somebody like Doobie Brothers or somebody who was opening for him? And they were pretty groovy. It was good. And then Van Halen comes out, Eddie's shredding, everything's great. David can't remember the words to anything and <sighs> is fumbling through some of it. The fans, he's kind of reading it off the fans, getting a little bit. Oh, that's sad. And I'm like, God, you know, finally I get to see Van Halen with David Lee. Yeah. He's terrible. Can't remember anything. He even said at one point in the show, who wrote these songs? Well, he wrote the fucking <laughs> He couldn't remember the words to jump, which is almost the only word Man. that he said. Right? I, uh, like, I remember, the, like, we all remember the words to jump. <laughs> but he, Are know, there any other words to jump? Right. <laughs> jump, may as well jump. Uh, might as, might well, as well jump. Yeah. Jump, jump. Go ahead and. Go ahead and. Might yeah, as well right. and. Yeah. Right. It's 90%. <laughs> I don't know. Is there a chorus? I, Jump! Oh <laughs> yeah, man! That's the yeah, it huh. was it was bad. That's he was sad. getting some booze. Eddie wouldn't stop, you know, to to recognize what's well, going on. He's like, I just got to get uh, the show over with. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who knows? But I I've heard that they don't get along super great. No. Yeah, that, that's like. And I'm like, well, if he's drunk, he'll be sober here in an hour or so, or good enough. But he was on some shit that night. He never came off. <sighs> Yeah, so I heard that Axel, well, that um, Guns N' Roses kind of went through a, a period of time where they had some real shit shows. Um, mm, yeah. When Matt, but then Axel sobered up and they got like. I don't know if he did. Or his, at least he started he showing got his up shit on together. Time. Yeah, yeah. He used to be, you know, he'd sit there sometimes two fucking hours. You know, it's, uh, you know, and you're drinking what, ten dollar beer. I ain't waiting like, for nobody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's really disrespectful to your fans if you can't get your shit together enough to get on. I mean, Every maybe time. maybe a little wait. Okay, I understand that things happen, you know. But fucking two hours, give me a yeah. break. No wonder people mm -hmm. get pissed off and throw bottles and shit. Now he's very on time every time. It's just a total flip. But I don't know if he got sober. Maybe. He did. Well, I that's I heard. I don't know if he got sober either. But I just heard that like they that you. Know, <clears throat> Like what it was some article I read like once again uh, you know like um, Guns N' Roses is a band worth seeing or some shit like that it was in it was in like a, I don't know it's good it's, it depends on, on the venue Facebook, too but. you know the, the Vegas was at the was at the Hard Rock that's thirty five hundred people so that's pretty oh it's a pretty cool. small show then going to I haven't been to a concert at U S Bank but I heard it's not great especially if you're up there where it's Shooting off the walls and all, but have you have you been to a, have you been to show at, uh, blah, have you been to a show at the Armory yet? 
almost i was supposed to go see judas priest and canceled but no i've heard it was good the venue is fucking amazing but i've only been there for a fight um and it is a absolutely cool ass place it's got the i think it's the longest bar in minnesota because the entire the entire ground floor is a circular bar Right, so if you can't get a drink at that bar, right, right something's wrong. But um, and then it's got the huge floor. Um, I have no idea how many people it seats, but for the fights, which were packed, was really cool. <laughs> See, so. that's where Primus is playing, and I'm thinking about going to that one. But no, I've got some. I've got to. I've got to rearrange my plans a little bit because I really should try to make this Chris Stapleton thing happen. Oh, is well, it flat I got there. Uh, yeah, God damn it! Now I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so it's a flat floor. Cause we did, like I said, we had fights, and you know, whenever I'm at fights, I'm I'm never, I'm not in the, I'm not a spectator necessarily, yeah. um, so I was doing all sorts of crazy shit. But yeah, so the, the cage was on the floor, and then yeah, and then I think there's floor seating, and then I think that there's there's a balcony all the way around as well. So the actual like cool spot to sit was in the balcony, yeah. um, but I'm not sure how they do that. But I don't know. I'd be interested. I mean, I don't know how many people can fit a fucking shit pile. It's huge. Yeah, I, I I got like hopelessly lost in the um, uh, parking ramp. Huh. I didn't think I was gonna get out of there. <laughs> it's like I have no idea what I'm doing. It's horrible. I've never been to the Myth either. I think that's kind of a flat with a balcony. That's a fucking cool venue. I mean, again, is it just does it exist to... still? I think so. Doesn't it? Okay. Well, I know I know it didn't for a while, but huh. we used to go there for fights, fights quite a yeah. bit back in the day. And but uh, it was, it was a, great for that. And I and I, looking at the setup like. It looked like it would have been great for shows. I like their little VIP, you know, seating sections and shit. You know, those little private little balconies and stuff. You know, like. But it was you know, mostly a dance club. Yeah. Yeah. But they did have, But a lot of bands did come through there. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good place to see fight. Or I don't know, not a bad. Eh, it was a it was a good venue for fights. Yeah. The promotion that was there, like. Was a little shady. Was lacking, but, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's the way most of them are when you when you work with the really good guys. They're like, mm. that's where that guy from Texas backed out of that fight. Mm -hmm. Brock Big fat shit. guy. Yeah, <laughs> we know you're. We, yeah, uh, he's not. He, like he's right on weight, and you're forty pounds over. <laughs> that's not cool. That's bad. Yeah, uh, that was that was a funny one. And Kyle wrote a really awesome like fake interview with him afterward <laughs> where i was giving him like where i had a bunch of snacks in my backpack and i was like feeding him the answer questions and shit and i had to read that a couple times because i'm like <laughs> who is he talking to what is going on here and then i'm like oh fuck he's acting like he's, he's talking, talking to, to, the, to the fighter oh, i didn't make shit, way. that was a good time and then they almost got into a fight in the uh <laughs> waiting room yeah but the uh but the, the show you, 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 you mentioned van halen so I like I went through a period where I like decided that I hated all the hair bands that I used to love. And of course now I'm like old, you know, now that I'm old, I'm like, fuck, that was awesome. But uh <clears throat> it made me think of uh when you mentioned Van Halen, it made me think of how <laughs> back in the day when Sammy Hagar showed up, I was like, Nope, mm -hmm. nope. And then they put out an album and I'm like mm. another album and I'm like Oh man, you know, like, and Van Halen was awesome with Sammy Agar in it. I fucking love so much of that stuff. I mean, yeah, I liked a lot of the old David Lee Roth stuff, but I think, like, at least at this point, I think most some of my favorite Van Halen songs were with Sammy Agar. Yeah, mm. it's I prefer the David Lee version, but you know, Sammy was almost different, almost. You know, you like a different up, band. Yeah, like a different band. You could definitely pick out Eddie's guitar and stuff, but. It was a lot more, I think they brought in synthesizers and stuff then, and it was getting a little bit different. But Yeah, it was a little pop, a little I more poppy. I almost always like every band's first and second, and then I always think they get soft. That's why I, I thought that I was going to, you know, that's why I was like, no, no, you know, because I always like the original, you know, lineup and stuff. But no, you know, and sometimes, you know, like, you know a lot of bands change, you know, like like Metallica and stuff like that back in the day, you know. I mean, they had to replace Cliff Burton, and then they, you know, and, and Jason Newstead was an original member, and, you know, like, it's, uh, you know, got to make allowances for these guys and stuff, but the lead singer is tough to get around. Yeah, you, know? you really, it's, I don't know, not too many pan bands have pulled that one off. I yeah. just, I just heard, so weird, because, like, 
I don't know, I always listen to a podcast, but I was just listening to Joe Rogan the other day, and he was talking about how the lead singer for Journey, Steve Perry, yeah, his name? yeah. So he quit a while ago, and they got this guy who was a who was a Filipino uh, tribute um, singer, and so he was in a Journey tribute band, and they were like, "Dead, just come on." And he, you can't tell. He's dead. He's so good. Yeah. And he's also <laughs> like, he's he's maybe even, you know, he's younger. And when he, I mean, he's maybe even a little bit better. And well, I, they were playing it. And I was like, oh, shit, that's really good. Yeah, because yeah, that dude did have a voice. There's one of the fucking greatest voices in rock music. I mean, yeah. That's know. like, what's the movie with Marky Mark? You know, I get playing in a tribute band you get called up to. Oh, you know, rock star yeah. or whatever. I mean, that's what happened to him. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> you know because it's not like steve you know it's not like steve perry is all like disenfranchised and broke or anything like that you know uh, he's probably a little hurt that the guy's so good probably yeah probably. i don't know i mean i don't know anything about it other than he he did he he hung up the or you know he hung it up he's getting fucking old well They're i think old. i thought he had like a throat like i think he did like some kind of he had to have surgery or some I mean, shit like that we are just making shit up now yeah it's pretty much true, yeah. true. it's called spitballing yeah that's what we do so what who else have you went and seen lately um or ever what's your favorite what's the favorite show you've ever been i saw uh my first concert ever was motley crew i think we we're in seventh grade holy shit and uh my buddy's mom brought three of us there and she waited in the park how, and how old are you now? Oh, that's awesome seventh grade what is that well how old are you now oh uh 48 Okay, so you're just a year, yeah. yeah so, yep. so you're like that. It must have been that was like smoking in the boys' room back, and it was yeah, days. it was the theater pan tour, and uh, <laughs> we all bought t-shirts. You know, I gotta get a fucking t-shirt, and and everybody around us starts smoking weed. And yeah, we don't know anything about weed, but we knew it wasn't cigarettes. So we figure out what it is, and we think we're cool, you know, and we go jump in the car and go home while we all wore our shirts to school the next day so we'd smell like weed, you know, <laughs> thinking we're fucking cool or something. <laughs> oh, shit. My, my mom used to always tell a story, which is weird because she's telling a story about that she wasn't there at, but I guess my, so my brother is a couple of years older than me, four or five years older than me. He was really into Kiss and my dad took him to a Kiss concert when he was maybe 10 and when they got home, my dad was higher than fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, she, he said, she said that he didn't smoke. He was just like at a contact buzz, but I'm thinking maybe he just was like yeah, fucking, you're a you know, you know <laughs> cats away, the mouse will play. But um, yeah, but she's like, he is glassy eyed. He's stumbling all over. I was like, I don't think you got that from a contact <laughs> buzz, <mom." laughs> So your first concert was, was Rush. Yours yep. was Motley Crue. Mine was... Uh, Actually, I kind of I feel like these guys were, were kind of an unappreciated band. I went to see the Cult. Mm, I like the Cult. I think I was sixteen, um, and they were fucking great. Um, the 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 venue wasn't that great for a concert. It was at the Orpheum, um, so I mean the venue le left a little to be desired. But the band is great, and I, the band I still like the band to this day. The Orpheum's a great place to see comedy, though. Oh well, I mean it's a theater, you know. Yeah. Like, but I mean, as a concert venue, not yeah, I don't really know. feeling it. It's yeah. like a movie theater, right? Well, yeah. it's like a yeah. it's like a theater, you yeah. know, because it has like a stage. I think I saw. Yeah. I was drugged to Ellen DeGeneres one time with a girl I was dating. It was really freaking good, though. She was funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, Me she and is one funny. other guy in the whole place. Oh, <laughs> of course, she picked us out. <laughs> Oh, I see we have two gig gentlemen here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are like opposite sides. I, know, you know. I don't know about you, but <laughs> she, she, uh, she was funny. I was when I like I I'm uh, I've been like tr tough on women in stand up over the years, but I find her pretty damn funny. And now like I feel like there's like like women comedians have gotten a lot better. Or something, because like a lot, I did not. I or used to, you, or, or I you changed, stop. Or just my sense being of humor has changed. It's not about being misogynistic misogynist. or anything like that. It's just women are hmm. funnier today. Maybe. Yep. Huh. I've always liked women comics. Well, well, or a lot. I mean, like comedy is such a fucking no, you individual. You're thing. just saying that because you're a woke ass bitch. Let, that's like saying I've always <laughs> loved male comics. There's a ton of comics I think are fucking shit, and that's on both sides of the gender. But 
a fucking funny person's a funny person. So I just don't think that I I don't think I ever saw a funny female stand up comic until well, until this century anyway. I mean this century. Yeah. <laughs> I was like the last hundred years. <laughs> Did you guys go see Adrian? No. No, that I was, was working. Funny. Did you see him? I couldn't go either, but I'm like, that guy is funny. I bet that'd be a good show. Yeah, uh, sold out, I guess, on uh, Rainer yeah. Gear. Yeah. Well, I was bummed out because um, cause Tony got a hold of me and was like, hey, do you guys ever do any comedy stuff at Zorba's? And I'm like, no, never. Because we haven't since I worked there. First time for everything. Because um, we, we wound up setting one up um, the same night, same time and everything as Adrian. What? Yeah. How was and, how was the show? How was yours? Um, you know, well, it was the guys that do the the morning show for K Fan, uh, oh. Common Man, and uh, Meat Sauce. I don't know what the fuck you're um, talking about, but I yeah, I didn't, I I didn't have no idea that all these guys were either, and I was not. I don't know. I'm tough on comics, impressed. but I didn't love it. I um, <clears throat> well, I, but I mean, I, it sold out, and a lot of people did enjoy it. You know, like I'm just, you know, my my sense of humor is probably a little more you know let's face it i have the fucking sense of humor of a goddamn 12 year old hmm. so i mean you got to joke about dicks and poop <laughs> right <laughs> like fucking my my potty humor jokes and you know like all that shit like my sense of humor is low brow as fuck i mean i i well i think that um adrian's show would have been really funny though i'd really like to see it but from what i hear everything i'm hearing about him is super funny and meeting him and talking to him was was great i mean right off the bat he like was cracking me up you know just some of the shit he says like, yeah, I asked him, you, <laughs> you know like so stand-up comedy all i do oh shit no man sold weed <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> shit. truth he's speaking the truth <sighs> took money from women <laughs> you, guys, you guys are always watching movies and i was gonna ask you who is funny anymore in a, I, mean, so I don't like comedies. I think, uh, you know, I used to like some of the stuff Farrell and Sandler did. I loved Farley, but it's like none of those guys are, I don't find them funny anymore. Yeah. Th- People have a shelf life. Will Farrell is a tough one because, like, I think some of his stuff, like, I actually thought Step Brothers was the, one of the funniest movies yeah. Yeah, ever made. For sure. Um, I mean, like, I pissed my pants watching it. Like, literally. <laughs> um, <laughs> the scene where they where they where where he walks into the parents' room, it's like, like why would you let us do that you know like they're making the bed <laughs> just it was so fucking funny but other than that like i don't really i i don't i don't really particularly like that kind of comedy like comedies i've liked lately is like guardians of the galaxy i thought that was great i thought yeah, Chris pratt's great lots of funny shit that in there great. or you know or even like the last avengers movie which wasn't a comedy but the funny parts of it you know with chris pratt you know did you did you uh, have you watched that Netflix uh, comedy? Uh, what's the one that I put the trailer on for? Um, yeah, I didn't. Oh, watch Be it. My Maybe. It's this much romantic comedy, but mostly just a comedy. I haven't, but I saw. The, I think I saw the preview or something. It's really goddamn funny, <clears throat> and Keanu Reeves is fucking hilarious in there. Hmm. Um, that one's like that's the funniest comedy I've seen in a while. Um, but I like right now I can't really like I can't put my finger on it like. Who's is that what you like funny? as comedies? Well, I miss them. I'm just like, I don't know who's, there's, there's some funny shows, but I, there's no like front comedy leading man. You know, Jim Carrey yeah. had his day and then he went off the deep, deep end. end. And, yeah. like, they, Though I like they him. They do kind of burn out, you know. Crazy. And, yeah, they do. Like, they just know. have that shelf life where they put out a bunch of movies and then they, it seems like, you know, that like it's over when they start making the family comedies. You know, or when they take themselves too seriously and start yeah. doing Man on the Moon and shit. True, true. Yeah. Uh, no shit, that was like, yeah, for him, okay, gotcha, we know you want to be a serious actor now. And you're decent at it, but you know what? It's not what people want, you right. know? I mean, I don't know. For me, I, I like Jim Carrey, though, though I do think oh, he's fucking nuts. Uh, like, the whole thing where he went, um, you know, totally in character to, like, the MTV, you know, movie awards or whatever. Uh, he went in character as, like, the... As like a, basically like a hippie, like you know, like J- uh, Jim Morrison yeah, kind of thing. That. But he wouldn't break character <laughs> at all. Like he would not. Break. So, weird. Yeah, he's fucking weirdo. Yeah. Um. So. 
but stand up comedy is better. Like stand up comedy is getting so much better. It's that's weird, you know, because I can't I think I. of a great like leading man movie comic. Like, like you know, that makes great, you know, like, like you said, like Sandler and, you know. And, and, Dude, Sandler's so bad now. Did you did you see the fucking, like, the Netflix um, racial uh, fucking one? No. <laughs> I don't even, I can't remember what the fuck it's called. Uh, but it was like, I don't know. It was a, like a, it was like a cowboy, you know, thing. It was on Netflix. Oh, the, yeah. Are you serious? No, it was all joke. It was a it was, comedy. It was like oh. the Magnificent Seven. Yeah. Only it was like a spoof. And yeah. No, it I heard was, that. I made it like ten minutes in, and I was like, "You're just being fucking offensive." I heard like it, everything. Yeah. It's just all you're doing is being. But then again, I tried. I watched a little bit of Happy Gilmore the other day, and I was like, "Oh, this is fucking horrible too." Uh, <laughs> like this shit was only funny when I was like. 30 because you know, it wasn't like it was that long ago yeah, so <laughs> it, but it really, was like hmm. Hmm, what did I th- that's see how I this? feel like I tried to rewatch um, like Super Troopers which is like uh, which is one of the fin- funniest movies I've ever seen in my life but trying to watch it again I'm like okay like it's maybe a mistake to watch to try to like to expect laughs out of a movie that I know word for word mm, yeah you know so Super like a Troopers lot of these, was I think only funny the first time well, I was I was expecting it to suck, and I wound up laughing. My, I don't know if I've ever. And laughed there are so only hard parts of it life. that I thought was super funny. <clears throat> but I yeah. wish I could remember the name of the movie. We watched something when we were on shrooms one time, <laughs> and I mean, guts were hurting the next day from <laughs> laughing, your cheeks and everything. And it was the stupidest movie that when I saw it when I wasn't tripping, I'm like, God, that was dumb. But boy, did we laugh. My buddy's sister's like, what are you guys doing? Well, that's the, the th- <laughs> first time that I watched The Three Amigos, I did not love it. The next time I watched it, I watched it with <laughs> with two of my buddies, two guys that I grew up with. The, and after, you know, of course, there were three of us, so after that, we called ourselves The Three Amigos. Um, but uh, And we watched it. We were high as giraffe pussy. And <laughs> fucking The Three Amigos became one of my all-time favorite movies. <laughs> oh, And, you know, and, but that one... Even and every time I watched it after that, still funny, you know. Like, but the first time I saw it, nah. Second time I saw it high with those yeah, guys, laughed I right. Didn't, I didn't so I mean, know. a lot of that stuff, comedy is, you know, like, like going to a comedy club. It's hard to be around like all those people and shit, you know, and like yeah, that adds so much when everybody's laughing around you and stuff, you know. And like, I hate trying to watch comedies by myself, like a co- like a movie. Yes, I'm I can't. Like, nah, you know, I'm not going to enjoy it nearly as much. No, I mean, I just don't watch them. They make me fucking sad, so. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel pathetic if I try to watch a comedy by myself. You got some balls for going on the stage, by the way. That's, that's fucking Doing crazy. comedy? Yeah. You know, honestly, it doesn't take any balls. Oh. I don't, I mean, like. I was drinking whiskey just to do this. I <laughs> I lack. I couldn't do it. I, I see, and I just don't think that that's true. I don't think that that's true, because you don't, you don't have any problem doing this. And at first you were a little nervous, but after a little bit, you got to, and honestly, <laughs> it's, it's unlikely you're going to have as many people at a fucking comedy club as actually watch this. So, you, you know th- what I mean? <laughs> so you think there'd be three people at a comedy club? We joke about it. Because four people watch this. <laughs> Some of our and one of them is here with us right now. <laughs> and he's going to watch this one over and over and over. How does it feel when somebody <laughs>, laughs at your joke, though? Great. It's got to be like it's rock great. Star moment. We were talking about it with Adrian, and I I w- just watched that whole show again the other day, and that whole that show was great. And part of I think the reason it was great because I felt like I was a little bit on fire because I had Adrian sitting back there laughing at me the entire time when me when we're talking with uh, Tony and Tony told this crazy fucking story about I just. <laughs> I still can't get over the little dog that she was like going to feed him oh, to the little dog. Yeah. And it's just so fucking funny. But anyway, it, it, but that, you know, <clears throat> it's hard to be funny in a vacuum because, you know, if you don't know if what you're saying is is funny, you know. So, yeah, having a crowd. But there's nothing better than being than being on stage or just being in front of people. It's not even necessarily on stage. And, have, and, and you can just feel that energy building. Mm. I mean, shit, the other night I was at the bar. And uh, we're working, and there was a group of uh, people in there. He had the, he had the quad <laughs> No, there's a definite. No, no, there's no problem being at the bar drinking. There's just a difference. <laughs> so I'm looking, you know, because like 
because I'm on stage. You know what I mean? Because I'm the bartender. Like, you got to listen to me, you know, kind of. I mean, I'm not like in it, but it's like I'm kind of the center of attention. Well, you're in a position point. of power. They need in a position to, of power, to see but you to get also, their like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. And I ended up getting into like a bit that I have never, like it was just kind of an unfleshed out bit I had been thinking about a long time ago. Um, but we're talking about, about um, women wanting guys to like, like um, put the seat up. In or, or to put the seat down at in or whatever. That's and, always confused me. And I, so I, my, like, can't so you I, fucking put the seat? I was down? like, look, like, I put it up because so that I don't pee all over. Right. It. I'm like, I get, I'll give you a choice, right? I, I give you a choice. I will either, I will either put the seat up and I will leave the fucking thing up or I will leave the seat down and I will leave the fucking seat down and I will piss all over it. All right. You have A or B, pick one. And, and I'm like, and then I was going on a rant, you know, and I was like, I mean, like, I have never in my adult life, okay, fucking one time, but I was super drunk, but other than that, never in my adult life, like, sat down with the toilet seat up and, like, splashed my ass in the toilet. It, like, okay, it t- this is all it takes. It takes this. It's it like radar. It takes yeah. this. Right? The same motion it takes to, like, check if there's a fucking car in the other lane when you switch gears. That's why women are so fucking bad at driving. <laughs> they can't even fucking, they can't even switch fucking lanes because mm. they can't, they don't have this down because they They've never figured that out for for, it, for fucking taking you taking a a piss anyway, and it was getting like the whole like you know and there was tw- ten twelve people there and the, the crowd was building and I was like I was like fucking nailed it. got him <laughs> you know um yeah so so See, like I love that like that and feeding off the crowd I'd keep and you stuff. coming back if you get good response you know yeah see I like you know I like it when people laugh at my jokes and shit like that but I just I don't know if I could do it on stage and that's you know and that's too bad because like. I'm constantly like writing like I'm I'm always writing jokes. I will write shit down that I think, you know, you know stuff like, you know shit that I, you know and shit that I want to get into like relatable stuff, you know, like like more of a story, not not necessarily a joke but a story, you know. Mm-hmm. Um but that's you know, like, there is no jokes. Jokes are yeah. but that joke's not a real thing. Um cuz I like just the other day I was, you know, I was thinking about how much um you know like like stuff has changed. You know, like now that I, now now I've got you know now now like boo boos with me a lot of the time, and like like car seats and stuff. Like now there's bases for car seats. Well, like when my kids were little, you just put the fucking car seat, you strapped a car seat into the you know into the car. Now they've got bases and shit. And I was thinking about all the things that are different. I was like listing off all these things, and one of my favorite parts of that was like, I was born in 1973. You know, my fucking my car seat was a fucking old tire in the back of a Chevy pickup, right. you know? And I'm like, I'm like, people can relate to stuff like that. Dude, you know? I like, remember, I remember driving in my dad's old Chevy or, uh, for he had a Ford pickup with a bench seat. And I remember like clearly driving down, you know, to the, to Minneapolis and we were standing on the seats. There was no, <laughs> fuck like, yeah. Hell yeah. I'm right. Crawling yeah. all over the place. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't even know if there were seatbelts, but I mean, we were definitely <laughs> right. just standing up and the, you know. Yeah, there yeah. were no like, fucking car seats. Uh, I never owned a fucking helmet until I had a motorcycle, and I never wore that. Um, you know, like shit like that. I, you know, fucking all this stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, on one hand, I'm like, I'm like, we weren't pussies. On the other hand, I'm like, how the fuck did we survive? Right. You know, I mean, because I, when I, I did you ever, uh, did you ever build a ramp? And ride off the end of the ramp, not, not get enough velocity going. Yeah. Fucking boop, you know? <laughs> Just eat shit on your bicycle. God damn, I ate shit on my bike. And you know what? And, like, that could be excusable, but I did it more than once. You know, like, I was bad at building ramps. Like, no <laughs> no grasp of fucking physics, you know? Like, you never did get the you never did get the carpentry skills down. No, 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 no. God, I got a crazy story. So, oh, man, so I must have been both. 14 and um, I, had a, I had a Kawasaki 80, you know, dirt bike. And, um, like I, I used to just fucking love to just jump the road approaches, you know. So I had a couple spots down in my house, and we were like, eh, fuck up, you know, whatever. And my buddy Corey Marchese, um, you remember Corey? I don't think no? so. Oh, he was Corey. like in it. You know Corey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he was in the. So he was like the cool kid, you know. But he's one of my good friends. But he was like always a little cooler. He was always a little better at like most everything, any sports, and you know he just. I'm a fucking talented little motherfucker. I called those. I called that kid all my friends. Whenever. Yeah. <laughs> Still to this day, you know, like I, he put, I saw a picture of him on Facebook, and I was like, 
You're still 10% better looking than me, you motherfucker. <laughs> Does he still have a gorgeous head of hair? Just a oh, fucking a of gorgeous God, head I of hair. I fucking hate that. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's got this beautiful scar on his face, which we're going to get to. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, so he was over at my house one day and he, and he loved to ride my motorcycle. And, um, but he wasn't as good at it as I was. <laughs> And so I was out there and I was like, you know, wee, wee, and I jumped the road approach and whatever. And I come back to him and he's like, okay, I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I was like, all right, man. Right. I feel so bad about this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? And I was like, uh, you know, I'm hitting it at about third gear, you know, have fun, you know, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I know full well, this isn't going to go. And I didn't lie. I hit it in third gear. But, I mean, there was technique, man. You needed, you got to, like, you got to, like, you know, pull it up as, like, a little bit before you get there. And then you have to hit it or you're not, or you're going to, well, you're going to do this. So he goes fucking at that thing and just, bam, just front tire right in. And whew, fucking bike goes flying. He goes flying. And I, and, like, he took off and I got this, like, whew, yeah. Corey's gonna fuck oh my god I killed my friend you know what I mean like there's I felt good right up until like he actually hit this thing and then he went flying and I was like he's dead so I go running over there and I look at him and um he's like holding his ear but he's got like this big cut on his face and I was like uh, I'm like oh dude you're, you know your face and whatever and uh um but yeah he had a fucking stick going through his ear oh <laughs> he was pretty fucked up Punch stitches. So, and the bike's laying there, and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So I'm like, I'll be right back. So I jump on the bike and I fly home, and then, you know, whatever. My dad comes and gets him. We end up bringing him to the hospital, and he has to, has to get a bunch of stitches and everything. <laughs> so, why did I tell that story? Because fuck story. that guy. I don't know. No. But it reminded uh, me of, oh, the r- ramps and shit, like, how do we survive? Oh, and stuff. yeah. But yeah, rem- I did. I just, just that reminded me, uh, like, your, your, like, how your, your, your reaction just changed. I just told a story yesterday about, um, and this was just from last summer, uh, over uh, Fourth of July weekend at the bar. Uh, we had uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the local guys, um, a local business owner. Um, one of his kids was in, um, and uh, we've had run-ins with a couple of this, like like one of this guy's kids before. Uh, his daughter, she was a handful, um, but his son was in. And we'd never met him before, but he, it was like, like I said, it was fourth of July and he had, um, like a, a red, white and blue speedo on, um, and a, like a red, white and blue vest. And, uh, he did have some, like, yeah, he had something on over the speedo and shit, but I, I had to talk to him probably five, six times in time, dude, put your clothes back on, you know, like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it got to be, you know, and he was, he was kind of, a, you know, he's kind of a nuisance, you know, like I, I apparently, I, I think he's probably a decent guy. Um, but, uh, he was a pain in my ass, you know? Um, and, but I mean, he was having fun, whatever. He wasn't really fucking hurt doing anything super objectionable, you know, but it was just kind of a nuisance. And, uh, finally at the end of the night, he was unable to take care of himself and the, like the, the shuttles would not take him, um, <laughs> cause he had gotten a little belligerent and, you know, at this point, fuck, you know, <clears throat> we've all been there. Um, and, uh. Uh, so the shuttles wouldn't take him and his friends were like nowhere to be found. Couldn't, you know, so he was our fucking problem. And I'm like, well, let's call his dad. <laughs> so we call his dad and I was like, oh man, this is going to be so fucking funny. I was like, you just wait. And I told the guys, I'm like, this is going to be fucking great. Is he still just got his beetle on? Yeah. Oh, By that point, like his vest was off. It was he was just down in his speedo. He was like ass up in the bushes, like out front when his dad pulled up. And I, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be fucking awesome. Then as soon as his dad got out of the car, I'm like, that's not awesome. You know, I feel bad for both these guys because at that point, like as a father, you know, I'm like, fuck, you know, he's like. Oh god damn it! You know, like I have got a business here. Uh, you're embarrassing me, and, and this is his son. This is a little boy. You know, like you don't want to see your son like that. And I'm just like, ah. Oh, so I feel bad for him. At the same time, like now all of a sudden, even though this guy was a fucking pain in my ass, I feel bad for him too, because I'm like he's visiting his dad. And his dad has to come pick him up from the bar. He's a grown ass man, 
And in the morning, he's going to be sitting at breakfast going like, oh, you know, been there too. That sucks. And except my, fuck, except my dad would have fucking snatched me up by the goddamn throat. But yeah, I was so convinced that it was going to be fun. And then right away, I'm like, this is not fun. This mm. is really like uncomfortable. <laughs> so I had a weird one on, on Saturday. <clears throat> and I don't almost, I, I've only ever like basically had three people ever, you know, like it's time to go kind of thing at the, at, at, at Main Street. Just almost never happens. I mean, everybody. It's not that kind of place. It's not that kind of place. <clears throat> but on, on Saturday. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, it's going to be that time yeah, of year. Right. People get weird this yeah. time. Yeah, right. Was it a was it like a full moon? This was a weird it's weekend. This, it's this time guess, of year. It's I people are fucking was over it, man. Fucking it's crazy as fever. well. Yeah. yeah, it must be the cabin fever. But I this lady come in, and I'm not going to tell too much of that story because I don't want to like have any identifying factor. But um, you know, uh, she had a, just a, a like a, maybe one drink, um, and. There was a conflict with her and her boyfriend or whatever. They went outside, da 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 da. Um, came back in, and she fucking uh, and her daughter came in with her, like to pick her up. Like I don't know exactly. What happened. She called her daughter, or whatever, and she fucking it just starts teeing off on this guy. <laughs> the boyfriend? Yeah, she can throw a punch too. Oh, yeah. That was so it went there right away. I mean, I almost no warning. Just walks in and she lights in. him up. Well, there was like a, there was like a, <laughs> he's there going. there too. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, told, I told you to, and all of a sudden she's just like, wham, wham. And I mean, she's, I mean, she didn't have great form, but she had a lot of passion. <laughs> right. And she was, she was swinging. She meant that She was shit. swinging for the fences. <laughs> so I went around the bar and I grabbed her and I said, I'm sorry, you're out of here. And I'm trying to, and I get her to the door and she goes, she like latches onto the door. Uh, and I was like, I mean, I can fuck. Couldn't get her. I was like, son of a bitch, <laughs> you know, like I, because I had her, I had her under, you know, I, I didn't have her over her arms. I don't, I, you know, I had her around the belly, and I'm like, god damn it! <laughs> and then so I had to like get over it, get that arm down, <laughs> and then go over and get and get. And then she's just a fucking kicking, and she slaps her daughter right in the face, and fucking her daughter's glasses go flying. And I'm like, so on the way to the car, I asked what her daughter's name was, and I won't say what it is. And she said, she said that. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm really sorry you had to do this. I said, but, you know, you know it's going to be okay. And she's like, I know. It's not my first time. And I was like, fuck. Oh. It was just like a, it was just a, like a, like a punch to the gut here and that. Uh, yeah. I know. Not my first time. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> we had a, uh, Well, I we, hope it's your last time. We had this pretty cute, like, tiny little chick, um, she was in, uh, it was a, a group of women. Um, it was a family, like it was a bachelorette party. Um, but it was like most, it was just family, like in like her mom and her aunt and like all this shit. And, uh, and she couldn't have been, she was probably like a buck 15, buck 20, tiny little thing. Um, and she went fucking ape shit on her family. She punched her mom in the face, punched her aunt in the face. <laughs> Like she was going ape shit. Um, I think she hit one of my guys or whatever. But uh, but that wasn't the horrifying. The horrifying thing was like watching her like punch her mom in the face. And Cody, you know, Cody's you know six four, you know, like three forty. He's, like, he's a he's a you know, Yeah, he's just fucking huge. And you know, and he, Cody is not comfortable throwing women out of the bar. I had to. Really, like, I had to pull, I had to pull a chick off him one time. Of course, this chick like had snatched his name tag off and was hanging on to him uh, by the genitalia. <laughs> uh, so, um, but uh, and, and but that chick I think was on meth. Um, this little chick, I don't know what the fuck she was on, but she was ridiculous. Cody's like, Cody's carrying her out, and she is trying to kick him over her shoulder. Yeah, she oh. was very limber. Yeah, she was very were, athletic. You, uh, yeah, I remember you telling yeah, that. So yeah, told that yeah. Story. like fucking Jackie Chan shit. Yeah, and she fought and fought, and then the cops got there, and then she bit the cop. Ooh, I mean, it was like she was out of control. <laughs> She's like, my boyfriend's gonna come and he's gonna kill you. Pussy ass boyfriend ain't gonna do shit. You probably beat him too. That's tough to. <laughs> if, 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 Chick gets wild, you know, all the little battles I had with my sister. You don't, you can't hit him back, but you're wrestling 
you're trying to hold down somebody that's going berserk well, that thing, you can't do anything to. It's very difficult. The to, thing uh, is, is that like, it's a weird thing because in, in jujitsu, the women are the ones that like end up hurting you more than guys. Because they're going know? harder. Well, they, they're going harder and you're not, yeah. right? And that's such a difficult thing to do. It's difficult to try to def, to protect yourself, but without using, you know. That's how I get, that's so how you get a, dinged a, bouncing. That's how you get dinged, yep. So you're trying to be, you know, you don't want to be an asshole, but you also don't want to, you know. And I'm not saying that I, I, like it, I take it easy on the girls that I'm training with, but I'm also not trying to assert my will you know uh and uh it's more it's just more dangerous so yeah my my friend jess uh down in st cloud and she's a she's she's a uh uh she's thick you know and in all the right ways yeah but the jacked. bitch will fucking rip your arm off man <laughs> i mean she's a da- she's a dangerous and actually when she hurt me it wasn't even really that wasn't i can't even say i was taking it easy <laughs> I was fucking arm barring her. I had her and she like like was posturing up and then she got and then I was like and I extended and I and then she came back down and fucking wrecked racked my rib and I was like <laughs> I'm like I'm done, Jess. She's like, Are you alright? I'm like, I think you broke me. So you're know, gonna tell me that yeah. she pulled like a Brock Larson on you and just like curled you or something. Well, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I, 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 it's always funny because we have, I have, we have Jess and Tamika. We have a bunch of girls down there, but Jess and Tamika are complete opposite sides of the spectrum. Tamika, who is Danny's yeah. wife, is tiny, you know, super duper technical, dangerous as fuck, but also just like super tiny. And then Jess is like, you know, muscular, muscular, you know, whatever. So I, have, it's a, I always like those two for women to like see when they first come in because it's like, here's a woman that. I would let fight any man <laughs> I know. You know, in the same weight class, they're fucked. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and she, I don't know how much she weighs, but, you know, like in that weight class, man, you know, and plus she can throw a punch too. So, and, but then you have Tamika, who's this, this tiny little thing who can also like choke you unconscious, you know, so it's kind of neat to, to see the two. So, anyway. I'm sure most of the girls could mop the floor with the average dude. Because, you know, unless... For sure. If, even if it's guy on guy, you, anybody can get a haymaker once, but that's their job is to not get caught with the haymaker and so tie I, in a knot. This is such a weird subject because it's very specific and has it's a, there's a lot of minutia. And I get in trouble all the time when I say shit like this. But... It's all right. I'll <clears> say something way stupider and people will forget about it. <laughs> in uh, somebody a woman who let's say is a blue belt in jiu-jitsu that like you know a year to two years of experience in jiu-jitsu if a if a guy is trying to rape them there's almost zero chance of that happening without without them being able to like to make to end it to make them go unconscious that said that's not the same thing as if they're punching them and you know like that's a different sure. thing so it's like and we talk about it a lot about how my goal in teaching like women's self-defense is not is 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 to like lower the risk of them punching you and hitting you and striking you, strangling you. What you really want, as horrible as it sounds, is you want them to keep their eye on the prize, and you want them to try to like get your pants off or whatever, because that's your opportunity to to you know strike to which isn't even the right word, but to secure up your, your triangle and put them to sleep or whatever. So, wish I could get my daughter into jiu-jitsu. Or maybe, you know, maybe now that she's going to be working in town. Yeah. She took that job at a census and stuff. Yeah. So. I've been planning for a bazillion years, but I've been wanting to do like a long-term free women's self-defense class. It's just a matter of how much time and energy. Um, but I got the whole curriculum written and have for quite some time. So mm, Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think those classes are valuable, like a legit self-defense class and stuff, because there's so many bad ones out there that, like, I'm like, man, where the, like, seriously? Like, do you teach that to people? It's you know? such a tough thing, though, because it's like a little bit of self-defense is almost worse than no self-defense. Mm. A little bit of confidence is almost worse than, than being afraid. Uh, right can get you in more trouble. So it's almost like you got to make a commitment to do it for... 
I don't know. I always thought it could be taught as a college course for a quarter or a semester or whatever. College. Cool. I think that's enough time to like have people by the end of it to have some basic, long-lasting skills. Speaking yeah. of college, anything less than that, you're fucked. Have some basic something. Yeah. Some well, every woman yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I always figured if you went around to some college campuses, campuses, and you taught women how to like choke people to death. Um, and they, and, and if that happened in a, in a sexual, a couple of sexual assault situations, I'm thinking the fucking attempts would go down, you know, <laughs> you got a, a couple of guys who end up with fucking broke it, broken orbital yeah, broken sockets, orbital so- <laughs> you know, <laughs> Good. speaking of college, what? Oh, speaking of college, uh, was this your daughter's sophomore year? Uh, freshman, freshman year, university of North Dakota. Gotcha. How's she liking it? She likes it. You know, uh, I, to my surprise, she didn't come home for about six weeks. I think when I went to college, it took me about three, <laughs> but she enjoyed it. She's, uh, they're in a room with like two roommates here, two roommates here, but it's all one room. Oh, they like kind of split. Yeah. Oh. Um, like shared space, but yeah. then, yeah. Four people, two bedrooms kind of, um, but she likes it. And, but you know, it's, oh God, you're going to get me on a rant. Oh, no, I don't let's like hear it. That's what I, we're here I'm for. I'm really <laughs> having a tough time, um, with college in general. Oh, me it's, too. My wife's in college to be a veterinarian, so she's in pre-vet stuff. Autumn's not quite sure, my daughter not quite sure what she wants to do, but, you know, you got to take all these classes and, you know, two years of basics. All kinds of generals and shit. She's yeah, got time to figure it out. Fucking 40 grand in the hole by the time you get to where you want to start. That's my problem with it. So I'm very much a technical college person unless you need to go to college to be a doctor, a vet, or something that really like Heather's taken uh, some super math right now that's just way beyond anything I could help her with um, organic chemistry and these biologies with these humongous words and I'm like man I bet your vet couldn't even pass that they never use that math or any of that shit well I mean from school you know like we we all learn that there's a lot of shit that they push on us that we don't have a fucking Sk- music. Skipped it. You know? I mean, I don't be graduated the eighth grade. Still haven't used algebra. So, yeah. Dude. Yeah, algebra. Fuck me. For real? You yeah, know, like. It's just required. And just shoved down our throat. And I mean, wh- I, what I about, just want to like, see people. Teach me how to do tax, or do, do my taxes and yeah, like shit like that. You know, like stuff. normal, like shit that I can actually use. I, I mean, not that, I, like, sure, some people can, some people use algebra, and, you know, but that's cool. Let them take that shit. You know, I'm not going to be an engineer. <laughs> like, I don't need to learn a lot of this right. shit, you know. Well, even in Anderson Brothers and road construction, you're setting up parking lots. If I knew the math, the geometry and those things better, I could probably take some shortcuts. But really, there's about five, six formulas I've used in 30 years of work in there. And right. that's all I got to know. Right. So, like, I remember talking with Brock about that. And it always blew my mind uh, at how, like, smart. Brock always blows my mind. And how smart he is and how dumb he is, <laughs> right? He's got this incredible dichotomy going on. And, but he was talking to me about how much the, how much, you know, the road had to peak. The you know, grade. The grade. The grade in the, and he was talking and he was going on and on about it and how important it wasn't because we were at a place where the road was wrong. And he could and he could tell and he was bitching about it and he was saying, Well, they fucked this all up, look what they should have done, da, 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 and he's telling me all this shit. And he was telling me like how he, they figured it out, everything. I was like You're the dumbest guy I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yet you can like figure this shit out, you can make all it, you know, like you can but you can do you know, it's so it's like there's so the thing is is it's really just applied knowledge, right? right. For the most part. Well what that's do you why, actually like, need to know. Intelligence is a motherfucker, you know, because like um, and I think we've talked a little bit about this, um, you know, cause I'm always like, I'm like, yo, no, you know, oh, he's a fucking idiot. You know, like I'm always throwing shit around like that, like, right. and, and, like questioning people's intelligence and stuff. But like, there's a lot of people that know a lot of shit, you know, like it's like, how do you want to measure it? Like, there's no, I, like I, if I ever find a fair way to measure like people's like intelligence and shit, like. It'll be a fucking miracle. So know? I think we should just stop trying, but we should just measure their stupidity. <laughs> because well, it's easier to figure out how dumb someone is than yeah, it is to figure out how smart it would, they are. It would be easier, but it would be tough on me because of all the dumb, dumb <laughs> shit that I've done and made a life of it, you know, and like all the bad decisions and all the fucking ill-advised, you know. Oh, man. So I have <laughs> a huge problem with 
uh, with the whole college thing as well. Um, I work with a lot of young people in my job, and that's like one of the things, and a lot of the kids that I work with, school's not, you know, finishing high school is is not probably an option, but you know, maybe. Um, but there are some of them that are facing like that they're that are that are looking at going to college and, and, and I'm in a weird position because like I don't believe in it for the most part. I gotta keep my mouth shut to my daughter too. Let Could, her form her own opinion. I believe that I definitely want my fucking doctors and lawyers and um astronauts to go to college. <laughs> you know, I want them smart. All right. But other than that, I don't think for the most part going and getting an AA degree, let's say, has any actual value to what, what to, to act, to going to, into work. It's 13th and 14th well, grade is all it is. I think that, I think that, that very much depends on the person. Um, you know, because there's, there's a lot of class that people, you know, a lot of, a lot of shit that people dismiss, you know, like, um, uh, like philosophy classes and stuff like that, you know, like yeah, a lot dismissible. of things. I learned a lot of shit. Sure you did. And it's I made did. me a sure. really like, like I'm a lot more well-rounded, you know, for I'm learning not like going to deny that lot, you know, like lot, like, like logical I fallacies and stuff like that. Don't think it actually made you, uh, I gave you any value as a worker though. I don't think it inc improved your ability to work. It improved your pick. You're going to get picked sooner in Trivial it Pursuit. May, <laughs> there it is may that too. improve your, um, your uh, uh, what's the right word, how easy it is to get hired, your marketability, but really not much anymore. Like well, two, a two-year degree isn't doing shit for you for most jobs. And when I hire people, a lot of times, you know, I'm hiring them. I need you now. It's summertime. I'm hiring experience versus right. a college degree with no experience doesn't do me any good. Zero. You know. Plus, are you going part. back to college, motherfucker? Because that way, then now what? You know? Yeah. You might like, get farther in your career with that degree. You know, once you do get the experience, you might be able to surpass that other person. But, man, let, I just really... Not, I don't want to be 100% against college, but I want to see the thing really get reformed, about half of it chopped out of there. And if you want to be a teacher, within two years, three years for sure, you'll have that degree. Four years is too much. Right. And then, like, what? so, you, so, so I, I'm pretty much against all two-year degrees. Like, as far as, like, I don't think that they have a cost to benefit there is no good cost to benefit ratio because it's fucking expensive Even trade schools that's a no we haven't got there yet i'm just talking about an associates of art degree i'm talking about liberal okay. arts associates of art degree i don't i i don't disagree kyle that some of those classes are probably really good and some of them are probably really important and i know you've had some mentors and shit from school that's great but for the amount that it costs to what you get for it in the um, you know um, as far as your job goes, it's it's mostly not worth it. But here's the part that's it really saves you bad. Money if you're, if you're, you know, it here's, saves you money when you get to a four-year, though. But here's the part that's even worse, is that most people don't finish it. So no. a half a associate's of art degree is worth less than shit. So, I'm going to spitball, but I looked up the odds, and like 25% graduate in four years right? from UND, where Autumn's gone, and then it drops like 15 and then to like six in the sixth year. So right. I'm like, if you graduate in four years, you're like a small percentage. Right. You know, and if you dick around, flunk a class here or there, you're going to be here five years <laughs> or six, you know. Right. Now, on the other side of that, there's the trade school idea, right? Like going to, going, CLC's got a, a pretty good welding program. Josh Carter, you know Josh Carter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll look up. Um, he good friend of mine. Um, he's the he's the welding instructor there right now, which I'm so fucking interested in having him back on or having him on. Um, we haven't had him yet. I just feel like we have because we talk about him all the time. But um, you know that's not a bad idea. That you you know you get done. You, it, it's short. You have a trade man learning how to weld's a good thing, so on and so forth. If that's something you're interested in doing, that's something I can support and get behind. And when you're done, you have a you have a skill that you didn't have before that doesn't isn't your well, yeah, I can't say, like, I mean, you know, like, for me, you know, 
like majoring in eligibility, you know, like what, uh, like what, what led me to, um, you know, the, like what led me on the career path, you know, like, well, let's see, what have I done since college? Worked in bars and gyms. Right. What led me to that? Sports, you know? Right. You know? I mean, but now, now, well, and I, like I said, you know, I feel like a, like a, a, a more well-rounded person, but as far as employability goes, you know, those are two separate things. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad for all those classes. Well, not all those fucking classes. Some of them were ridiculous. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it sucks. You know, like even, even back then, you know, you get into the, you know, get into the wrong class with some like fucking extra woke asshole professor that like, like, Oh, uh, I had a couple of, you know, and one of these days we'll talk about that. I had a couple of experiences where like, just because of what I look like and cause I sat with like the other football players and stuff, I got garbage. Like I, I had to deal with some shit from some fucking, from some teachers. Um, I got accused of plagiarism. Like, there's no way you wrote this. I got accused of plagiarism shit. And I'm like, that just told, that just told me that like that lady didn't read a fucking thing I wrote all year. Cause I write decent, you know? And like, she just hadn't like, read of anything. Of course I wrote it. At the end, it says, take your shirt off, girl. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but she was this old hippie broad. Broad, jeez. Yeah, okay, that's good. I don't know if I can like that term. Um, but you know, does that sound disrespectful? I hope it doesn't <laughs> towards her. It should. Um, but, uh, and she was about to go on sabbatical like the next semester. So she was just going through the motions. She just wanted to get the fuck out of there. She was a horrible teacher. At least she was at that point. And she didn't read a fucking thing that I wrote all year. And then when she read my final paper, she's like, and this right here. And I'm like, well, that happened in Herb's class. He has the office next door. Should we go talk to him? And she was just shaking. She was so fucking mad. And I'm like, seriously, like, you want to, you want to squash this right now? Like, let's talk to her. Let's ask him the fucking question. And then you can tell me that you read everything that I fucking wrote and graded me on all year, you know. Anyway, the long story short, like, there's just some bullshit like that, too, you know. Accusing um, somebody of plagiarism, you know, especially if they didn't do it, is like calling a, someone a liar in the fuck, cowboy yeah. days. I mean, <laughs> Big time, you know. Pretty bad accusation. I'm just You're calling me dumb. And, <laughs> well, and you know, like that's some shit. Like you can get expelled for that shit. You know, right. like I could have got thrown out of school. And really, and what was at the root of it? Her just being a lazy. I'm not even gonna fucking finish that. But like her just being well, cunt? a lazy cunt. Yeah, oh, okay. fuck her. Like, she did, shit. did somehow did you I get shy of it. the word cunt? <laughs> right. I know, I know. We can't. I, I kind of want to mention your name be, on here too. You can't be changing the rules on me. <laughs> we like that word. Well, We've embraced nice it. If they would cut down the classes, I think and. Um, you know, speed people through a little bit, get rid of some of the well, and double the price extra actually. stuff. <laughs> it's like, geez, it's crazy expensive. So, but then the other thing Autumn said, which I don't know the solution to this, she goes, Dad, I don't have any experience in anything, I don't know what I want to do. And I was in the same situation, you graduate high school. Luckily, my dad had a business, so I, you know, he gave me one week to lay on my dead ass and get drunk. One week, you got a week, <laughs> yeah, and I had to beg for that. I'm like, Dad, just one week to go to Whipple Beach, to, you know? Oh, but, shit. Some kids want a year in Europe, and you're like, seven days. You got no experience in anything, so other than maybe sports. Or so in the game of life, you know, you get that choice: you know, go to school and da 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 da, or you know, just jump into a career. So, I, so like. I wanted to ask you a little bit that, about that because you're big, you're a big employer in this area, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what? Uh, um, so let's say you got a kid who's 18 years old. He's a hard worker, and uh, he want and and he's totally fine with not getting his mind all all liberalized in college. He just, <laughs> <laughs> he, just he just wants to go to work. He comes in. He wants to avoid Pam. And uh, yeah. and and, oh, and 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 lands a job in in the construction. Uh, uh, industry. So what is that? What's that start out at? Um, for pay? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It must be around 15 bucks. Okay. Something 15 like that bucks now. an hour. So it's a little better than, than Walmart. Could be a little, little bit more. And little, then if you end up on a state job, you get what's called prevailing wages. So I know. I like it's super. You might get 30 all of a sudden. Right. But That's the weirdest thing in the world, right? Yeah. And it, I don't like how it's laid out. It's great for people because they get more money, but it's when you look at the different pay scales, like 
a laborer could be getting more than an operator sometimes. Right. And, you know, it's just yeah. Bro, I, again, like I, I, I've spent, you know, literally thousands of hours in the car with Brock. Um, and sometimes you end up talking about the craziest shit, but he was trying to explain to me how that works, how you could have like a, I've you spent can, thousands of hours in a bar with Rory. <laughs> <laughs> you can be, have a, a guy running a steamroller and that guy could be getting paid 18 bucks an hour. And then tomorrow he'll be a block over and he'll be getting paid, you know, 32 50 an hour right. because yeah. of this, because of it, like, but that part aside, so you're starting off 15 you're bucks an hour. You're probably going to start out as a flagger or something, um, and flagging is the worst job of all time. Looks I, like, it looks oh easy God, as pie, so right? Boring. <laughs> you're always the first one there and the last one to go, because you got to you gotta get there so everybody can get on the road, and then you don't leave until everybody's off the road. So you work dark to dark, standing in one spot all day. Um, I did it a couple times, and I remember the one time I did it all day, I didn't have a watch or phone or anything. And you were like, Dad, fuck this. I'm going to college. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just, it was the long. I've, I've had shorter days in jail. <laughs> and my fucking lunchbox was empty. I could have swore it was 1, 2 o'clock, 10 in the morning. <laughs> Damn. Fuck, this is a long day. That's like me in the deer stand. I haven't been in the deer stand in a long time. But I remember, like, I, when I used to go deer hunting with my family, with my wife's family, you know, I'd get up there and I'd be like, oh my God, I've been up here a long time. And then like, I'd finally like convince myself it had been long enough to go in and it had been like 45 minutes <laughs> and everybody else, <laughs> what the fuck did you do it back? I was like, I've been out there all day. I do that. You're such a pussy. You know that, uh, the thing where you, uh, you don't look at your watch, you don't want to, you don't look at your phone, like you're trying to avoid looking at the time because you know, once you look at the fucking time, then that shit's going to be forever. Mm. Like I do that at the bar and I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's gotta be midnight. Right? Like, you know, it's gotta be at least midnight. Fuck. It's 10 30, you know? Yeah. And then I've looked at it. So I know. So then I'm like, fuck. okay, I looked at the fucking clock at an hour ago. Motherfucker. That was mm. 15 minutes. You know, like, the work my, fr <sighs> my friend Guante does a lot of, poetry but he's got a poem about like uh being a cart pusher i think it is but he's talking about how his how the breaks are scheduled you know he's like in that first break is you know not it's not i don't want to quote him exactly i don't know exactly but he's like it's not for your it's not for your body it's for your mind because you're halfway to being halfway to being halfway to being halfway done you know so that's how you split it up i just i love that line so anyway so so being a flagger sucks Sucks stick for sure. Yep. <laughs> Some people actually like it. I don't know how they can. I mean, they just like to be in the sun and they like to talk to people, I guess. But talk to, who I talks to the fucking flagger? There's, you know, it's either nice or not nice. Usually, I'm not. I never. Well, I never talk. I mean, I give them a nod. Yeah, you know? my friend Melanie is always tan as shit. Like, yeah. Um, Rock started out was uh, on the. Um, I'm pretty sure he started on the, either one of the patch crews or doing the crack filling yep so he'd walk with uh, the 20 miles with the honey day. pot yep. is that what they call it the honey pot yep back yep. and forth filling the cracks blow, one guy blows them out the other guy fills them he he used 20 to, miles a day yeah <laughs> he and rory used to <laughs> yep. do that yep. yeah yep. so. rock was great to work with because if you you know you can imagine what a tedious long job that is but he's always goofing around right always makes it but fun he gets a lot of but he he gets the job done. Yeah, and he'll yeah. he'll do well, the so dirty work and then trade off. With, you know, he jumps into he's you know he doesn't tell people what to do. He does it with them. Right. Yeah, that's like leadership. Yeah, fun fun to work with. So now you've been working. No, I'm not you, but this fi fictional person, 18 years old. They just started um, in the construction zone. They've been working for four years now. So they're just about ready to to, to get out. Go get out of college by four years time they're probably running equipment and now they're making 20 to 25 bucks an hour regular rate and you know you got to remember you're making that's um you're gonna work 60 hours a week so you're gonna get 20 of overtime right. time and a half on that right so you start which getting up in the 60 70 hours a week which a lot of them do every single week that's a big payday right and then that but that's crazy man i've i've spent a chunk of my life working 60, 70 hours a week. It's not sustainable. But the good news is, is that pretty much every fall you get yep. laid Deer off, right? season, we're pretty much done. Um, I'd say, but 
I'd say the lowest labor, probably around 20 to 25 grand. That's not even really a full season, just kind of spotty work. Um, highest operators are probably 60, 70 grand in, right. a, in a six or seven month period. Right. And you don't have to have a, a Associates of Art degree. Nope. <laughs> what, what? You got to have a CDL. That helps. And and that's that that is the one thing is that you have to get a commercial driver's. You don't not in all of the jobs, but for most of them, you have no. to have a CDL, which is a commercial driver's. Which license, is cool. I mean, if you leave there, you, you can't can take that get CDL till you're anyway. twenty one, though, right? Mm, I don't know for sure, but it seems mm-hmm. right because I can't think of anybody younger than that driving around. <clears throat> well, I know, and I actually legally am spitballing here, but um, I know at we work a lot uh, with the um, uh, workforce center. And they help people get their CDL, but you got to be 21 for that program. I don't know if you have to be 21 to get your CDL, but I know you have to to, to, to get into yeah. that program. They'll only do it if you're over 21. Um, and then, but you really don't need any other education other than that. Nope. You got to work hard. I mean, I went to college for construction management, and I mean, I I didn't know anybody at Mankato State. I got a 3-1 in the winter. I got a 3-0. And I joined the fraternity in the spring, got a zero zero. <laughs> 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 but I'd been through enough of the construction management to learn that it's they're basically doing vertical construction, and we don't get any higher than the curb in our business. So I'm learning so much going home every summer, I'm like, and now my grades have taken a dive. So I'm like, I really don't need to go back, mom and dad. <laughs> right, I'm and that you were a, doing it after so much money. As right. an eighteen year old kid, I'm getting, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollar checks. That was in nineteen ninety. Right. And <laughs> took them to the blue ox. But that was a you know, that's a freaking load of money and it's it's hard work. Um, very hard. And it can be hard on the family, you know, it's we're very family orientated at our company, but it's stuff. It is, yeah. Because during during that season it's a lot of times it's it's dark it's dark, dark to dark. dark. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I went uh, you know, if you get there at five thirty um, you almost feel like you're late because there's so many people already there mm-hmm. getting their stuff going. I mean, they're rolling well, early. And you guys are like, you guys are pretty big. You guys have like a, a good size, like administrative staff and stuff too, right? I think total we're 250, 270. Fix your company. microphone, Kyle. What's the yeah. matter with my well, microphone? Well, you like let it, I don't know. I, just, I couldn't hear you. Oh. Yeah, there you go. 250 yeah. to 270 in the total company, and there's probably 20 in the office. Mm-hmm. 20 in the mechanic uh, bay, and then the rest of us are out in the field. Hmm. But, I mean, we've got a ton of Larsons that work for us, uh, <laughs> a ton of tooling checks yeah. that work for us. Yeah, it's um, basically just, you know. <laughs> Brock's dad, do you guys know yeah. him? Swede. Yeah. I mean, he's got the largest, like his hand, if I put on leather mittens, we'd have the same size hand. <laughs> yeah, that's but true. he always hauled the equipment around and used those big chains and binders and, I mean, I'd have to get the bar out, and I'm like, mm, you know, trying to get the chain tight. Swede comes or like he's shifting gears. <laughs> those just those fuckers are so man. strong. I mean, even Carl, you know, yeah. big, big jolly old Carl. He's still like, well, we were talking the other, the other day. Brock was telling a story about he choked a fucking cow. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something they do for fun. Oh, well, you know, yeah, right? It was exactly. You, fun. you think we can get him to? We get Carl to fight a cow uh, in the ring? And it, maybe, maybe. He, yeah. The April event. Yeah. <laughs> Co main event. I don't know. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Uh, all right. I got to take a piss. So let's take a quick break and uh, then we'll come back and uh, you know, talk a little more. Yeah. Right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Spitball. I'm Matt Taylor with my good buddy, Kyle Amundsen. And again, we have the baller in chief. Eric Anderson in the house. Thank you for that title. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it just I sounds like an episode. You, we're going to get you a custom, <laughs> custom shirt. And I put, you know, you guys mentioned it one time when I'm driving, my speaker's not loud enough on my phone, so I always, like, put it in here. Right. And then I can hear it. Yeah. Going I know. I do that every Monday and morning. And you were uh, uh, telling me at the bar one night that uh, you are like, yeah, and my fucking phone's dying all the time. Because you were watching the YouTube videos, and I was like, you know, there's an audio version of yes, it too. Yeah, that yeah. Helps a lot. <laughs> and so, like, really, you're not really into podcasts, though, right? The only one I've ever listened to. Which well, is, I guess, I've heard some Joe Rogan. It's the only one you'll ever need. No, huh. I, don't, I don't feel the need for anything else. Huh. Well, I don't. So uh, many goddamn good I'm ones. I'm not and a you big s- podcast guy either. But 
but I you don't, don't have the time. I honestly, I thought you I, spent a shit pile of time in time. the truck. Well, yeah, I drive around to our gravel pits and get samples and run parts and things like that. So, I mean, half hour there, sometimes three hours, always driving. I mean, always on the road. So, yeah, I, I got her tucked in. There. Okay, so we need to talk. Not a dump truck, just a pickup. We need to talk quick about the this uh, um, Jawbone headset that you need to get. All right? Yes. Okay, wow. so it's called the Jawbone headset, and you... Like, first of all, you can't talk on your phone anymore when you're in the vehicle, right? right. So it's, you know, whatever. So, and so this is like the most, you know, uh, seamless integration to like be able to take a phone call and it doesn't cover your ears. It sets over your ear and it, it sets right on your jawbone and dude, I can't live without it now. I fucking I love it. I'm very interested in that. My wife who calls me fangirl. She's like, oh, where'd you see that on spit bottom? <laughs> like, yes, as a matter of fact, I did. But, I mean, it's uh, it looks light and not yeah. bulky, and you could wear it at the gym maybe. Yeah, yeah for um, sure. I look and like you, a dumbass, and I walk in with my big bows. Yeah, and I don't even. Um, you got to have them now that, nowadays, though. I'll, I'll wear my head. I'll wear. I, I just I still wear the, like, the little earbuds. Um, I wear those even if I'm not listening to any music, just so people leave me oh, alone. Yeah. Yeah, I could never get them damn things to stay in. Yeah, I can't either. I my my ears are a little yeah. fucked up from jujitsu, and um, it's especially my uh, uh, left ear. And I I just like about twenty minutes having a having an ear butt in, and like it, my ear is on fire. Yeah, it hurts like a son of a bitch. And and Tharg has talked to me in depth about the different because he has this shit that he like put in his ear, and it like forms up and then you i don't know he's got this way of doing it but even that i just i don't think that that plus you're plugging your ear then and when you're plugging your ear you can't drive or you shouldn't um and uh but these job ones man it's great is there any downside to them right, you said something about using the <clears throat> phone but i probably wouldn't do that anyway what answering your phone yeah why wouldn't you I'm not that technic- Dude, techno. Dude, you can't even. So, like, I have See, my. That jo- seems like a big leap for me. I have my. <laughs> I have my jawbone in. Right, my jawbone's on. I wouldn't even get a new phone, phone because rings, I'm afraid. Right, the phone rings, and it. I hear it just like I would hear it, though it doesn't ring out loud. You wouldn't hear it, but I would hear it just like I hear it. I grab my phone, I go, hello. And it's just like that. It's just like you're talking mm. in my head. Dude, it's Star Trek level shit. It's oh, fucking amazing. I'll, I am going to um, put a link to it um, yeah, in those are very interesting the comments. Uh, I'm going to remember the job ones. And uh, you gotta, they're not even expensive. I mean, less than 200 bucks. And uh, <laughs> I probably have I probably have close to $1,000 of headsets that I've you know, tried over the years Mm -hmm. that are just in a pile of garbage now. So yeah, I love them. Um, they're the best. So that's another, that's another not sponsor is the job on aftershock is the thing, man, we really (coughs) endorsed. I mean, like there's those, there's your special underwear, the, the me undies, the me undies. So like headphones, underwear, (laughs) cocaine. You guys endorse a lot of shows. I watch a lot of shows that you've said. Yeah. Yeah. So what was that one that got cut God off? Fucking like, God, that was uh, Godless. <laughs> that, f- that fucking great series, but they, they had it set right up. I know, I know, and it was so good. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that. I said I still haven't watched it, which is weird. Good cowboy flick. Y- yeah, it's um, real good. But yeah, yeah, Kyle mentioned that that you were like, you had had message him saying, "Man, that is a great yeah, show. I can't, can't wait, wait for the second the season. season." And I'm like. I'm sorry yeah, buddy. about that. <laughs> about that second season, kicking the nuts. They don't make enough westerns. Like we, like we had that the the episode uh, was with Drew. With Drew yeah, where we talked. Uh, we must have spent two hours on westerns. That was at a long least. one. And uh, man, they really don't make enough westerns. So, you, I'm glad you brought Drew up because I wanted to talk about this. And I am oh new go, album. He, yeah, it hasn't dropped quite yet, but. Um, his lovely bride uh, sent me a message. Uh, shit, was it uh, yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. And she's like, um, hey, would you like to review Drew's new album? And I was like, I would fucking love to. And so she sent me a link to it, and I got I got a, a little sneak peek of it. It's so fucking good, dude. It's so good. Oh, it's cool. it's uh, He did some of the uh, really old 40-watt bulb stuff that never that <clears throat> they used to play him and PJ used to play or BJ rather used to play. And then, uh, 
but kind of got retired. But there's one song in particular uh, called Selma, which is a song about uh, a guy who's uh, um, on a ship and he's like kind of bringing it to the attention of the captain that he doesn't think we're, they're going to make it. <laughs> And he's and he's like, oh, it's such a cool song. It's dark and it's got this like weird, um, uh, like, uh, um, mine. It's in this minor key and it's kind of droning. And I just loved the song. I used to call it because the first line is Captain Captain. So I used to always call it the Captain Captain song. Uh, but the real name of it is Selma. And I kind of asked Drew what that means because I don't think it's about Selma, like the fucking. Uh, uh, equal rights, you know, um, deal. And the only thing I could find is Selma is a style of ship. Um, but it's really more like a racing yacht. So I don't know what the fuck. So I can't, I gotta ask him why it's called Selma because it never says hmm. anything in the song about it. So, and I know, uh, I know, uh, uncle's not on there because apparently he'll never play that song again. Apparently I've heard that song uncle for the is, last time. Uncle's recorded though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I've like, uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, my success in getting him to play that song for me has been poor. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, 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 I asked for it uh, like the last time I saw him play someplace, um, and then uh, when we had him on the show, and I'm that that like. That, that, remember the song "Fuck You, Kyle"? I don't care right. what you want to hear, or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. That uh, I, I think that. Uh, that about sums it up. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got to have him back. Uh, I am not gonna. I I was, I was considering playing that song as our as our extra today, um, but I'm not going to because it's not released yet, and I don't want to like jump the gun and sure. put something out there if he hasn't put. Because I'm not a hundred percent sure this is the the final version, you know. So I, I'm just not gonna do that. But um, uh, I'm probably gonna do like a full album review at some point. Um, and um, and definitely do that. But just because I have it in my notes here, um, Friday, March sixth, um, Drew's going to be at Roundhouse, um, and I know at that time he's going to have the album available. So I'm going to definitely co- go to that show, um, and uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So if anybody out there wants to come and join me, it's March sixth, seven o'clock at Roundhouse Brewery. March sixth. You guys yeah. have had some great people play for you, and how cool is that to watch? You know, yeah, sitting right next to you, dude. It's the best. It's the fucking best. Like having, um, yeah. I mean, I talk about it all the time, but when we had um, Seth, Seth come and play, yeah. uh, like, and I mean, I've seen Seth play probably a hundred times, and I love Seth, and he's fun, but that was the best. That was the best Seth I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having cool, him dude. right here and, and singing, and it's in your ears, and it's so, I mean, that is something else. He's got a rich voice, dude. I mean, if that's, that's the word I use, I guess, but it's just different. And mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got that crazy um, Joe Cocker kind yeah. of a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to. I'd want to definitely try to have some more musicians on, but man, musicians are hard to hard schedule to with because yeah. they're always all over the place. Yeah. So on the break, we started. We kept talking about the about the fucking college thing, and and I realized that there was a lot more that I that I wanted to say about it. And I know you kind of feel the same way, but um, and not just the college thing, but um, one of the issues that I really have is how um, how getting up to 12th grade you really really doesn't do much to prepare you for like uh, entering the workforce you know I mean we kind of cover the basics but why is there not a class that actually like covers how to like do tax preparation you know, just as, as simple as that, or how to um, do uh, like uh, how to figure out like compound interest, you know, and like like you know financial you know investments and so on and so forth, you know. Well, a little bit of that should they tag? I mean, just to, you know, like there's like consumer math, which is like. <laughs> I think that's that, the remedial math yeah. that they put you that, in. Though. I I do. I don't. Uh, that, I think that could explain why I was in it. I think consumer math, is, and I don't know. I mean, it's been a hell of a long time since I was in school. We, when I was in school, like I was, you know, I was in the drooling club. You know, I was like, I always, I always said I was the, I was the cream of the crap. You know? <laughs> but I was in all the remedial classes, and so I, I had a math called practical math, and it was like, you know, it was basically. You know that because they just realized I wasn't going to be able to do fucking geometry. 
you know. I've been thinking about like going back and getting some shit like like from my high school records. I just don't know how a person would even go about that um, because uh, you know when I kind of gave up on school for a while. Um, eventually, they tested me because they were like, uh, "Is this guy like? Is he like mentally handicapped or is he crazy <laughs> or like?" So I had to go. They made me see like like a psychiatrist, and they gave me a, ex, just this huge battery of tests. Um, and all this stuff, and then to figure out what the hell was wrong with me and why I wasn't doing why I wasn't doing any schoolwork, and it came back and like and I was not surprised by the results, um, but the results were I mean they they basically they kind of the, 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 at the end of the day I was just bored, right? You know because they like they assigned like a like a level um, like a level of school like like okay. Like his, you know, my lowest stuff was like math scores and they were, you know, my math scores were still, my math scores were still at college level, you know, and that was my lowest shit. And, um, and, uh, and I don't even remember like whatever, sophomore or second semester, you know, like it was really specific. Um, and, uh, I want to, I want to look at those again because they, because, uh, the, the principal's like, yeah, it says here that you're really bored. Like you haven't been challenged in a long time, and you know, because I went from like I went from like being like in elementary school, like the the program for the gifted kids, which I did not get invited to in junior high, and I was like, what the fuck, you know? And then that's kind of when I was like, meh, fuck this, you know, and was not a good student. Um, but I want to go back and read that shit again, you know, like because I mean, I really like when we were, I was thinking earlier when we were when we were talking about like what we cut out of school, I was like. Well, but I mean, it's so individual, but I didn't learn shit. Like I learned a lot in elementary school. Mm-hmm. Not so much, you know, a little bit in junior high, high school, mostly because I had an amazing science teacher that did not put up with any bullshit. And I was always convinced that he was going to fucking kick my ass if I fucked up <laughs> in his class, which that, that worked for me, you know, because um, I grew up like, you know, like like my dad and shit, you know, like I respond well to the threat of, you, to the back of getting fucked right. up, you know, like... <laughs> Oh shit! This guy's gonna kick my ass if I fuck up in his class. You know, he's not a pushover. Cool, um, Mr. Bruin. He was great. Um, so I learned a little bit in junior high, but I learned nothing in high school. I mean, <clears throat> except for you know, some shit about drugs and sex and throwing a kegger and you know shit like that. Yeah, <laughs> keggers in the woods, man. Yeah. Do kids even still do That's that? That's economics. I feel bad yeah. that I never experienced that. Huh? I feel bad the kids today haven't experienced. Dude, that. I like. I was trying to explain that to somebody the other day but when i was you know 15 16 years old we would have parties under the washington street bridge right like mm-hmm. you know like the, you know there's there's um you know the dairy queen and then you go down underneath the bridge we'd have, and we'd have fucking parties you know there'd be 30 people there there'd be a fire there's no way you could do that today fuck no man. and it's not like they didn't know we Jesus. were down there the cops used to come bust the party and just say, "Get out of here, go home." Yeah, yeah we yeah, we all in we never had anybody come grade. down there and chase us away. I think it was most. I think they were. It was kind of scary to get to. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I mean, you know, you kind of take your life sketchy. in your hand. Yeah, I remember one time I was really wasted and I, I uh, was gonna go up to do something and I got up to the top of the hill and then I fell back down and I rolled all the way down the hill. <laughs> And I landed, so we, God, this is a horrible story. So we, uh, we were having a problem with people pissing everywhere, okay? So while, when we, while we were sober, right, we were like, all right, we're going to have a designated piss hole. So we, like, got a shovel and we dug out, a, 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 like, a little, small little latrine, and that was the piss hole. And, like, everybody was supposed to piss in the piss hole. So I climb up and I fall back down and I roll down in a course. I right fucking in land pistol. in the piss hole. Uh. And all my asshole friends are like, Matt's in the piss hole. And I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> they all start pissing on me. Mother Jesus. Mother. And I can't, I'm wasted. And I can't get up. That's the end of that story. I'm pretty glad <laughs> I told that one. Shit story. It's it was pretty, pretty uh, funny when he landed, but then when they're pissing on you. Yeah, what a bunch yeah, of, like, they were just bad people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I didn't learn and shit now, in high so, school. So, you know, like, trauma patterns work, you know, like when you have had something like that and then yeah. like when it reoccurs, you like, you know, you feel so like 
every time I'm getting a golden shower now, I just it brings me right back to I really have that. You can't even really relax and enjoy yourself. Yeah, fuck, it's hard. Okay, sorry. Um, oh no, just uh, so learned a lot in elementary school, a little bit in junior high, nothing in high school. You know that I would. I, I almost said that I that wouldn't help me later, but that's not really true. Um, but nothing academic in high school, and then a lot in college. But I mean that, like I said, that's so individual, and that's mostly because I was a fuck up, and I just decided that I wasn't going to do shit. You know, mm. um, I mean, too. But one part of of K through twelve education, I think we could completely eliminate is history. See, I love that one, man. But <clears throat> for what we get, it's really you know like. I did learn later on that like a lot of the shit that I learned was like kind of weeks. So you know? one of my absolute favorite people in the world is a podcaster, um, Dan Carlin. He has this really in-depth, intense um, history podcast called Hardcore History, and they're long. Like each episode's like four or five hours and multiple parts. And <clears throat> and he says that we should eliminate history in high school or in school in K through twelve. Because history is not something you can look at, like, without a magnifying glass. If you just look at, like, the overview of history, this, this light touch is, is less than worthless. You don't get anything from it. That kind of makes sense. Yep. And he said that the only way to really learn history is to go deep dive into history. And the only way to do that is in well, there's actually a lot of ways to do it now. Sometimes it's a really deep podcast, but um, you can, but you can't do that in a school setting. It has to be a deeper dive. And he's like, and we spend a hell of a lot of time on history. We can just skip it because I don't know if that really like I mean, sparks might wanna... a person's interest in history. You know, because like I think the stuff that we're a lot of times. Oh, and, yeah. and don't get me wrong, my yeah, favorite classes in school. I mean, I remember like sixth grade. I had this, uh, huh, Mr. Belgium. I even remember, yeah, I remember his name. him. But he did a yeah he did a, a Vietnam you know deep Vietnam history thing and he was a Vietnam vet and he showed pictures and shit and it was good. So I remember was, Mr. Young Hands and he that's where I remember learning about Vietnam and stuff. Yeah, which but is it was interesting. Which is me. interesting and great, but it's not it didn't do me much good. It doesn't do you much good, and that's, that's the true. thing. But without any knowledge about any of that stuff, I think that'd be bad. I do think we probably can't skip. Uh, knowing about uh, World War II and the yeah, Nazis. And I suppose they really did the, hit highlights. It seemed like pretty in depth at the time. <laughs> well, the thing is, is it done? It like you know, a lot of it is like, what year was the Declaration of Independence? Who gives well, a fuck? Yeah, it just don't we should stop whitewashing that shit too. Like yep. you know, we need to because people come out of high school with the idea that you know. With that weird fucking idea that like you 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 do away with later in life, well, one would hope that we're that we've always been the good guys. Yeah, you know? American exceptionalism. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's not healthy. You I know. Think, well, I mean, I guess at a certain level, you like you don't want to like. <clears throat> I mean, it's hard to tell like a, you know, you don't want to like convince some third grader that they are responsible for a fucking massive genocide. You know, like. Hey, you know why there aren't, aren't more uh, Native American kids in your class? Because we fucking killed them. You know, like, that's a lot for a third grader. Right. Whatever. Pretty heavy. But at, at a certain point, you know, like, we should stop being the hero of the story all the time because people get that. I think that's so I don't know how I feel about on. that, Kyle. I actually feel like it's very, very important for Americans to see themselves as the hero and then to follow that up by acting like it. <laughs> and we we do a, hard part. we do a really we do a really good job in our country yeah. of of feeling like the heroes of the world. But we don't do a great job of acting like it. And I think that we could. I think that both the feeling of what my what I want my America to be. Um, I I'd like to work harder to like get to get to be that to be the reality. You know. I heard something interesting the other day, and I can't remember where. Um, but the guy was talking about how through movies and books and fairy tales and everything else, we all believe in the back of our mind at some point in our life we're going to be rich and we're going to hit the big break. Interesting. And a lot of us live with the frustration 
that that hasn't happened. We you know? don't think it's going to. And, you know, I, I guess you can kind of look at it either way. At one point, maybe you don't want to set yourself up. On the other point, it's hope. That's what, you know, it's all about. It's the hope. I, is it a false hope? That's interesting because I felt that way most of my life, you know, when I was, like, running, you know, and, and, and never, it was never really the financial, like, you know, like nugget, like I was going to like become financially independent. But when I had my restaurant and, or when I had my first, my cop shop and then my first, my second restaurant and then the third restaurant, like the idea, I felt like I was trying to build like an empire, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, not like, but that like, at least when I, when I decided to be done, there was going to be this thing that survived me and, and hopefully was able to take care of me, you know, and then that all fucking got wiped out (laughs) and I had this kind of crisis of faith where I was like now what do I do this has been almost 20 years of my life I've been I've been chasing this thing and now it's gone what what do I what do I want to be now and I it took me a while like about a year and I talked a little bit about it in the other podcast with the wood with the woodworking guys where I kind of got to that point where I like was like um, where I got my shop and I got to, and, but I, I got to the point in my life where I realized, oh, I don't need any of that. That's not actually what sick being successful is to me. Being successful to me is just only doing shit I enjoy doing and only mm-hmm. being with people I enjoy being with. And like, I say it all the time, but I really only do what I want to do. So like when my, when my, when my, my friend asks me to do something, you know, and say, you know, and they're like, and I, and I say, yeah, yeah, I can, I can come, I can come help you out. Like I'm doing that cause I want to. And that's the only reason I'm doing it. I've, I've started a couple different things. You know, I haven't always worked for our family business, but I've found that I love everything I've ever started on my own has been on a, on a dry eraser board. I'll write down, you know, how much this is going to cost, that's going to cost, erase it, change it for about a month or so, and then either do it or don't. And I've always, I've I had the Paul Bunyan Extreme Race for a while, sold that. I had the High Rollers Hot Rods for a while, sold that. Um, enjoyed both of them. The journey, I enjoyed so much. But uh, the most value I got out of both of those was the, point of selling or getting rid of them and it's like well what's next Hmm. because okay i did that and i sold it i did that and i sold it and it's uh it's that okay now what right just it's like god there's more in there i just gotta dig it out you know yeah and that's where probably the thing one of these days i'm gonna be rich from my dry eraser board (laughs) idea you know right and but I don't so, think there's anything bad to that. For me, it's hope and no, you know, chasing no. your dreams. Don't and know. the thing is, though, for, as far as, like, wealth goes, though, like, to me, that's just the, uh, that's just the uh, uh, score. That's the way you keep score, you yeah. know? So, like, um, and I feel like a lot of people who are really successful, like, people, like, say, like, oh, man, he's got, you know, billions. Why does he need more? It's, this is the way he's keeping score. He's want, you know, they but just if, want to know that they're winning. If you said you basically do whatever you choose to do, yeah. and you said you made a million bucks this year, I'd rather be you. Right. Oh, God, yeah. Me too. See, that's the thing. Because so, that's but, golden. Do so I, I don't use, I don't, I don't think that money is, is, a, is a valid way for me to keep score anymore. No. For example, we talk about it all the time. But like, and we joke about it, but like the podcast and how we like are doing the, the stay poor slow scheme, but also like how like the fact that we aren't doing anything to try to make this monetarily successful is so relieving that and I don't, we, like, I don't even want to. Not like beholden that, to anything. Like, to well, anyone. <laughs> it, it might, it might fuck it up. It might be like the balloon animal thing. And now the, now I'm. Now I hate making balloon animals. <laughs> I never made balloon Well, I loved but, hot rods, but once I made it my business, that was not fun anymore. Right. Now I'm dealing with right. Joe Blow's hot rod, which I don't like. It's a nice pinto. That's not doesn't get me up in the morning. <laughs> right. So turning my hobby into a business wasn't 
Right. It worked good. I mean, we made good money. That's we the sold thing. it for good money, but right. it took the fun out of it. It does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know you were into hot rods, though. Yeah. Are you still? Oh, yeah. I, my first car was a 66 Mustang uh, we bought when we were in Arizona. Dad and I drove it all the way back, just pushed it out. I mean, that was I was 14 and a half when we got it, so I was pushing, oh, yeah. sneaking it out at night for a year and a half <laughs> before I had a license. That's and awesome. I'd drive it. We lived in Aiken at the time, and I'd drive it over here, and we had a gas pump outside of the Anderson Brothers' gates, and, I mean, gas was, that was pretty dark. So I wish you. Did. I wish you still did. I'd fill mine up, and then whoever else was out sneaking out with us, they could fill theirs up. And oh Jesus, we had some good times. <laughs> um, so what do you have for vehicles down there? I sold all of them. You don't I, have any. You don't no, have any. You I, don't have any project car. No, I only missed two of them. I had a a, a '65 Shelby Daytona Coupe, which is really freaking awesome mm-hmm. and loud, and and uh, a couple of Porsches I had, but for me. Um, I love the classics, um, the look of them and the sound mm-hmm. and the feel, but they're not that much fun on a daily basis. No, to drive, you know, right? No power steering and right. you know, you gotta, <laughs> fat guy got to reach over to roll up the window. And, <laughs> um, but I always like something I can take to the track. That's my favorite. So, and I, I, I don't know, we keep telling these same stories, but I, um, back on about 30, I had the shine still, I think it was like 30, seven ish um but i bought this 1980 uh chevy love pickup truck tiny little pickup truck and it was and it had low miles on it, it had like seventy thousand miles on it but it was it had sat in a field for fucking you know two decades and was just red you know <laughs> just i mean it had more it definitely had more rust than steel you know <laughs> and uh and it was a long process but i was i ended up taking it all the way apart took the cab off and everything and and you know cleaned it all up and did all the body work and everything and i was really did it with i mean i don't really have all that much knowledge i just you know did it with youtube and just you know some trial and error and whatever and it's and it, it's not great it's not perfect by any means but it was but like i love my truck you know um and you put so much time and energy into it oh i remember so i was going through um, mcdonald's one day Whew. one time all right <laughs> <laughs> and actually it's not true I, I i don't try not to eat much mcdonald's but back then I, I had a thing for those fucking um i would get those um when they stopped when they started selling the sausage uh the breakfast all day long i i'd buy like just a sausage mcmuffin not no egg um, and they were a buck, and I'd buy that, you know, two That's o'clock in the instant, afternoon. Instant bathroom visit. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one dollar, one sausage McMuffin, and it was like a small enough thing that I'd eat in the afternoon. At like, I don't know, at, I liked them, but I haven't eaten one for years. Anyway, so I was fairly, fairly often. I was going through the McDonald's drive-through, and the lady who was at the drive-through kept saying, "Oh my God, my husband loves your little truck. He wants, he loves your little truck. He loved to buy it." And I was like, "Not for sale." And she's like, "But he would love to buy it." And I was like, "Not for sale every time." And finally, she's like, "Hey, it just I'm just asking, how much would you charge for this thing?" And I said, "I tell you what, I'll sell it to your husband for ten dollars an hour." She's like, "What do you mean?" I said, "I'll sell it to him for ten dollars an hour of the time that I have into it." And she's like, okay. And I'm like, 35 grand. <laughs> <laughs> and she, that, yeah, she was no longer interested. But the thing is, it's like, I don't even know if that math is correct, but I have blood, <laughs> lots <laughs> and lots of blood and yeah. sweat and like, and you know, steps forward and ridiculous steps backward and like all of that stuff, just trying to like, you know, get the different. So one little tiny thing about it is that it. So it's a four. It's one of the smallest four wheel drive pickup trucks in the world, and it has the super. It, yeah, they're a mini, but they're extra short. That's a too, ridiculous right? truck because yes, it was. It's an Isuzu, is what it is, and it was made in Japan. They're completely made in Japan, and then Chevy made a deal with Isuzu and started shipping over these little Isuzu trucks stamped a Chevy on the front of it, and bam, there you go. But there's nothing about it that's a Chevy. It's a hundred percent a little Isuzu. Um, but yeah, so it's got a tiny little frame and, you know, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's even smaller than like an S10, but, uh, it, it was one of the first trucks that had, that was four wheel drive 
that had the, um, well, it's definitely the smallest one like that. But anyway, it had lock-in hubs. So you had to get out and lock in the hubs, and then you could be in four-wheel drive. Well, the fucking the locking mechanism was out in the front hubs. Okay, well, you know, what do you do, right? You can't buy an aftermarket one. They don't exist, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, they're ex- we they're call a guy. <laughs> he fixes it. <laughs> well, they're, they're, it's, it's exclusively for, for the Chevy. So I went on this almost year long search for these things. And I finally find this guy who's got a front end of a 1980 Chevy love with working locking ups, just the front end, uh, for 250 bucks. And, uh, I, uh, you know, make the deal on, uh, on Craigslist or whatever. And it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. Um, and I have to borrow Brock's truck and, you know, get, go down there and get this goddamn thing. And the only day that works out is like Christmas day. Right, which is fine with me, because I never do shit on Christmas Day. So I wonder, but I end up getting like the flu, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't not make it. So I'm going down there with like 102 temperature. I'm sweating like a pig, driving Brock's truck, fucking, you know, like hallucinating and shit. <laughs> and then still I, a better driver than Brock. Then I get there, <laughs> and I realize was that a deer? <laughs> And I realized it's way fucking heavier than I thought it would be. The front end of this, like, I don't know, it's going to be fucking heavy. So then I end up taking, end up taking hours. I'm still just dying with like ratchet straps and I'm fucking, and I'm pulling it onto this trailer. It was a fucking fiasco, but that goddamn thing works today. I was not, yeah. There you go. That's impressive to me. I wish I was mechanical, but. Fuck. And so, I'm like, even with all these hot rods, you didn't do the you didn't do the no, work. No, never been mechanical. I I love the chase. I like the uh, search out a good deal, buy it right, flip it, cruise around for a while and beat on it. But I always buy stuff, especially paint. This is where most people get. They just this is what prevents people from buying them and flipping them is paint. I mean, easily, nice job is easily twenty. Mm. 10 you know you can get a guy your neighbor to do it for five with a spray can or something but if you're talking a really nice car it's that's what gets you so i always bought cars to flip that were ready to go maybe a little Mm. tweak with a a buddy that was a mechanic that could you know fix the carb or something like that but nothing with body i would avoid those like the plague really so that's my favorite part is to like do the body work you know but again i'm not doing like a you know, a pro level job, but it's just fun. Yeah. It's kind of like sculpting. So, I mean, like, I don't know. I remember when I was a kid, like Bondo was kind of like a bad word. That fucking shit's amazing, dude. (laughs) Like Bondo is like, like it's fucking amazing. Like there's Bondo that is, uh, like there's different kinds of Bondo, but one kind of it has long hairs of fiberglass in it. Mm-hmm. And it's like this, na- it's like nasty green looking, like you know, like snot shit. But you put that shit on, right? And where the bondo is way stronger than the than the steel that's on now. <laughs> I mean, like significantly strong. It's because people think about bondo, is, but there's a lot of different ki- kinds of bondo. Anyway, um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I've made some lots good, of shit with that. Bad. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, what else you got on your list there, Bubba? Man, I. uh I actually uh, just saw the time, and it's it's getting there. All right, yeah, cool. So nothing else that you, it burning desires you need to Man, get rid of. No, nothing really. I mean, I, I'm bummed out. We we were going to talk about uh, like voting rights and stuff for, for felons, um, um, but uh, we can do that next time. We got to yeah. have you back on the show. I did. This has gone by so fucking fast. It has. That was. I like. Was quick. I, was, I looked at my phone and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. What time no is way. it? It's quarter after six. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's time what I'm saying. warp. Time warp. Uh, well, th- yeah. but that's the you know we start bullshitting and I'm like I have all this shit and I'm like okay we're gonna talk about this we're well, gonna talk about this and we start bullshitting and then pretty soon like oh shit isn't really? that Did that just happened isn't that the thing <laughs> that you said when we talked when I talked <sighs> originally about you about like coming on and you're like that's well, why I'm the- drinking peanut butter whiskey today <laughs> well I know but <laughs> and I'm nervous just so anybody that wants to see I'm a big fan so I wanted to be on here and I think these guys are interesting thought it'd be fun well then 
when we first talked, I'm like, well, what do you guys want to talk about? And I think it was Matt just text back, yes. Uh, it was actually Kyle, <laughs> but that's my favorite thing. And I'm like, he what says, the fuck does that mean? You say, yeah, what are, you, what are we going to talk about? And Kyle says, yes. And it's like, that's it. There isn't an, there isn't. Well, we didn't get in if anything we did, dirty, so I feel pretty good. <laughs> we didn't. Okay, we better come up with something quick. Yeah. Uh, well, there was a golden shower thing. With, you know. Yeah, you know. Um, okay, not telling the golden shower story. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just funny, and then uh, and how like we can just go on and bullshit forever. You know, it's always fun. Well, Eric, we really appreciate how into the show you oh, are. Got my shirt on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love and uh, and you always have interesting shit to say on the, on the thing. So we just really appreciate it, and you're always a fun guy to talk to. So thank thanks, you, guys. Appreciate it. You bet. Yeah, Anything thanks. else you wanted to? To talk about? Nope. Nope. Okay. That was it. Okay. Well, I would say Just let yes. people know how to get a hold of you, but fuck, fuck that. Don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we next um, week we're going to be at uh, Open City Thrift with uh, Steve McKnight. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So that'll be kind of interesting. A uh, new thrift store in town. Uh, we're gonna check that out. So that'll be the next one, and we will see you guys next week. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into the podcast today. That sure was fun having the old baller in chief on. So taking you out today, I'm going to kind of depart from our regular uh, thing of having a, uh, a local musician. And I'm going to uh, play you something that uh, my son Peyton turned me on to uh, from this YouTuber called uh, Boy in a Band. And this song uh, is uh, called Don't Stay in School. And uh, I, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, I mean, uh, uh, it's a little controversial, but I, I think it, uh, point, uh, points out some of the things that, uh, we were talking about today. Um, when I first heard this song, uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, it was quite a while ago. Uh, Peyton was probably 13, 14, and, uh, we had kind of a tradition where we would, uh, get together and, uh, we would exchange YouTube videos. Uh, we'd call it YouTube night. And, uh, Pate says to me, um, Hey dad, uh, I got, I got, I got a video I want you to watch, but, um, you, I, I don't want you to, uh, to read it or, uh, I don't want you to, to like look at the description or anything like that. I just want you to listen to it all the way through and then we can talk about it. Don't judge. And I just liked the way he approached it and I really liked the song. So check it out again. It's name, uh, it's called, um, don't stay in school. And uh, the artist is Boy in a Band. Um, the video is pretty awesome. You should check that out as well. All right. We'll see you guys next week. I wasn't taught how to get a job. But I can remember dissecting a frog. I wasn't taught how to pay tax. But I know loads about Shakespeare's classics I was never taught how to vote They devoted that time to defining isotopes I wasn't taught how to look after my health But mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell Never spent a lesson on current events Instead I studied the old American West I was never taught what laws there are I was never taught what laws there are Let me repeat, I was not taught the laws for the country I live in But I know how Henry VIII killed his women Divorced, beheaded, died Divorced, beheaded, survived Glad that's in my head instead of financial advice I was shown the wavelengths of different hues of light But I was never taught my human rights Apparently there's 30 Do you know them? I don't Why the hell can't we both recite them by rote? I know igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary Box, yet I don't know squat about trading stocks or how money works at all Where does it come from? How does the thing that motivates the world function? Not taught to budget and disperse my earnings I was too busy there rehearsing cursive Didn't learn how much it cost to raise a kid and what an affidavit is But I spent days on what the quadratic equation is Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A That's insane, that's absolutely insane They made me learn that over basic first aid Or how to recognize the most deadly mental disorders or diseases with preventable causes or how to buy a house with a mortgage if I could afford it because abstract maths was deemed more important than advice that would literally save thousands of lives but it's cool because now I could tell you if the number of unnecessary deaths caused by that choice was prime 
Never taught present day practical medicines But I was told what the ancient Hippocratic method is I've got a headache, the pain is ceaseless What should I take? Um, maybe try some leeches? Could we discuss domestic abuse and get the facts? Or how to help my depressed friend with a mental state? Um, no, but learn mental maths Because you won't have a calculator with you every day They say it's not the kids, the parents are the problem Then if you taught the kids to parent, that's the problem solved then All this advice about using a condom But not for when you actually have a kid when you want one I'm only fluent in this language For serious, the rest of the world speaks too Do you think I'm an idiot? He chose the solo over the political system So like a typical citizen Now I don't know what I'm voting on Which policies exist or how to make them change me We je parle un peu de français so at 18 I was expected to elect a representative for a system I had never ever ever been presented with But I won't take it, I'll tell everyone my childhood was wasted I'll stare at everywhere how I was educated And insist these pointless things don't stay in school That mm -hmm. one chick story was fucking awesome. Dude, yeah, I made the wife listen to that, and she's she that was, shit blew my mind. Just stuck to the one phone the, the whole episodes. time. So, holy huh? shit! That was one of the best episodes.